is unbelievable. You can't do this stuff. Oh, my gosh! Now, fire up the crowd for the win. He nailed it! It is a spectacular mid-October Saturday in the South. There's a predominant color of orange and blue. Sound the horns, the Auburn Tigers are at home. And they are undefeated. We welcome you to the Home Depot SEC on CBS. This afternoon from Jordan-Hare Stadium in Auburn, the Arkansas Razorbacks, they've only lost one. That's to Alabama. Take on the Auburn Tigers 6-0 in this 2010 season. Second year for head coach Gene Chiswick. He has gotten this crowd of 87,000-plus in a frenzy as this very critical SEC game is about to get underway. And a rather leisurely pace taken by the visitors from Fayetteville. The Razorbacks of Arkansas, four and one. They had a 20 to seven lead three weeks ago at home against Alabama and lost the game by four. Here they come. Well, they've answered the question, how fast does the hog run? And out of a cloud of smoke, the Tigers of Auburn Remember that 2004 season? They finished undefeated and they were left out of the BCS championship game. Not that they remember anything. Good afternoon, everybody. Vern Lundquist, Gary Danielson, Tracy Wolfson. We have reached that point in the season when attention should be paid to the standings. Gary, how about the SEC West? Well, it's only the best in college football, the SEC West. Four teams still alive for the national championship, and now that Alabama has a loss, the pressure is going to shift from Tuscaloosa to the rest of these teams. Right. That spotlight is now going to come on these teams, and when this game right here, when this is over, that team will be in the center of it. Well, you take a look at the college football landscape on this Saturday. I don't think there's much question we have the premier matchup of quarterbacks here. Without a doubt. I've always been saying, like, Ryan Mallett needs help, and that may be true in the running game or on defense, but when he's throwing the ball, he's got plenty of help. I think they got the best receivers in college football. Their experience, it's their third year doing this in this offense for Bobby Petrino. They go up and get the ball with Childs. They've got speed to the outside and right. And they also have, I think, the best receiving tight end in college football in D.J. Williams. Mallet may need some help in other places, but not when he throws the ball. Well, and for the Tigers of Auburn, Cam Newton has been spectacular in his first year after transferring in. He may be the most expected, highly expected player in Auburn in a generation, but he's come and exceeded those expectations because he's been able to run the ball with broken plays or on designs and throw the ball with necessary. For Arkansas to win the game today, they've got to find a way to control them, corral them. They can't stop them, but just try to slow them down. At this point of the season, injuries become significant. For more on that, here's Tracy Wolfson. Well, Vern, it's amazing in this day and age you can actually keep something out of the media, but head coach Gene Chizik able to do that this week with true freshman running back Michael Dyer's knee injury. He's been hobbled all week in practice. I spoke to Chizik earlier today. He told me it's definitely a concern. Mario Fannin will start, and if Dyer can come out, be effective and be physical, he will play. If not, expect him to stay on the sidelines, guys. All right, Tracy, let's bring you up to date weather-wise. 72 degrees. Winds out of the northeast at 5 to 10. The forecast sunny and clear. This is only the 20th time these two teams have met. Only once did they meet that in the Liberty Bowl before the Razorbacks joined the SEC in 1992. They have met annually since then. 
Arkansas won the toss. They have elected to receive. And dressed in white with the red trim, they will be going left to right. Just a footnote as they get ready to receive the ball. In six games, they have yet to punt on their opening possession. They've scored touchdowns on their first drive in each of the last three games, and they've not punted before then. Red, one of the local writers in Arkansas, said they got an interesting game plan. They have a well-scripted first drive, a two-minute drive at the end of the half, and then they hold on in the second half and see if they can win. Yeah. That's dangerous in this league. Yes, indeed. Joe Adams is back to return at the freshman. Modricus Humphrey had returned kicks uh, in place of the injured Dennis Johnson for a couple of games. Adams got the call last week. So the wide receiver will grab this. Oh, it, they barely got it at the goal line. Joe Adams up and out of bounds at the 18. Demetrius McNeil with the tackle. Well, let's see if we can uh, determine what his plan was. Here. We'll say he's looking directly into the sun, and he misjudged it a bit, but, you know, he didn't panic, Vern. He got it out. It wasn't a disaster. Ryan Mallett for the season, 1,748 yards. He has thrown in excess of 300 yards in each of the last five games. Empty backfield on first down. Mallett, quick setup. Hit as he lets it go across the middle. It is... Incomplete. Well, you've met Ryan Mallett. How about the rest of the starting offense? And it is presented by Chick-fil-A. Up front, Love, Grayson, Swanson, Bailey, and Ray Dominguez. Adams, Childs, and Wright, the wide receivers. Greg Childs might be the most gifted of them all, but they're all of them, as Gary said. Very good. Here's Bobby Petrino, head coach. Second and ten. Fake the toss. Handed off inside to Niall Davis, number seven. He led the way in the uh, win over Texas A&M last week. That's a game of 14. Vern, as good as Ryan Mallett has been, every time we talk to Bobby Petrino, he says, I just would love to give him a little bit of a running attack. They had over 200 yards rushing last year against this Auburn team. In fact, Michael Smith went for 184 himself. So you can see what his thinking is. He'd love to be able to keep the pressure off of Mallett. Ronnie Wingo is in the backfield. They'll use all three wide receivers. Broderick Green will be the other. Here's play action. Mallett goes deep right side over the head, well over the head of the intended receiver, Jarius Wright. Well, let's check this. Uh, Tiger defense, Carter, Clayton, Nick Fairley has had a really outstanding start. 12 and a half tackles for loss. That's second in Division I. Linebackers, Stevens, Josh Bynes and Bates. And in the secondary, and this might be a problem for Auburn. Washington, Etheridge, Savage, and Nico Thorpe. They've given up a lot of big plays. Three receivers, one tight end. Arkansas, 75% pass. And here they go down the left side. Double coverage. Incomplete. Intended for Greg Childs. Now, that's not something I made up. That's something Ted Roof, defensive coordinator for Auburn, told us. So it's not just I'm aware of it. Auburn is plenty aware of that same formation. Set Childs down the left side. That play looked very much like the play with which they defeated Georgia in their last SEC road game. That broke a tie in the last 41 seconds as Childs caught a 41 yard pass for the winning TD. Mallet gets oh. it out, it's dropped. That was Joe Adams, number three, and for the first time and here, Arkansas will punt on its opening drive. Well, this is about as good as you can throw it. There is a flag. Could have been a first down, and, and this is a little bit... Obviously, it's going to be a penalty against Arkansas. A little reminiscent to me, Vern, of the nerves that Arkansas had last year against Alabama. Big game, one they had to have. This type of an atmosphere, they did not play well with a lot of drops. Here's Dylan Breeding. He is a native Alabaman. He played his high school ball at uh, Hoover. Here's the snap back to Dylan. A little pressure from the right side. 
And this one will bounce and go out of bounds. So nothing on the return. That was Gwendarius Carr back to return it. 42-yard punt. And Cam Newton, just a spectacular first six games. He'll be the quarterback when Auburn comes on the field on offense. LG, as a proud NCAA corporate partner, presents great SEC rivalries. It's all about tailgating, flag waving, drink shaking, face painting, hell raising, celebrating, trash talking, no mistaking, celebrating, spiritual, as a receiver, touchdown, and fall. All day, Dixie Way, Saturday, and a Saturday. SEC rivalries, it don't get no better than that. I don't like that bird thing they got going, that little thing. But the thing is about their crowd, they always in it. They, they always so into their games. And I love that about playing on the road that's a hostile environment, that the crowd is in it from the time the, the whistle blows to the time it's over with. And I love that about Auburn. Well, <laughs> when you come to Jordan-Hare Stadium, you're going to get that little bird thing. Longest win streak in the series, three by Auburn. Nine of the 19 decided by seven points or fewer. First down, 10, Tigers. Mario Fannin, as Tracy reported, will get the start. And there's uh, Newton tucking it. Well, he doesn't wait long to run. And this time, he picks up only one yard. Brian Jones, number 54, makes the tackle. Obviously, Jones in the starting lineup. Cam Newton, transferred from Blinn Junior College. I think many of you know, and we'll uh, detail his personal story throughout the afternoon. Out of Atlanta, College Park, Georgia, and he was highly recruited, signed with Florida, played one year, redshirt of the next, transferred to Blinn. More as we go along. Fannin cut down by Jericho Nelson, number 31, and the rest of the Auburn starting lineup presented by Chick Fuller. Zimba, Barry, Pugh, Isom, and Mosley up front. Mosley only his fourth start. The rest have 137 starts among them. Burns, Lutzen, Kirken, and the rest. Third down. Four wides, three to the right side. Arkansas brings four. Newton, flag down. Pass complete. It's a first down if the play stands. All the way to the 41. Darvin Adams, number 89, to the 30-yard gain. But hold everything. Well, our great matchup that we have in this football game are two great SEC football players, Lee Zimba and Jake Beckett. And that time, Beckett, I think, forced the hold. Penn Wagers is the referee today, and it will come back. One thing I have. Number 73 on the offense. Penalty 10 yards from the previous spot. Play third down. One thing I have noticed, Vern, is the defensive ends, and here's the play, here's the matchup right here that's going to take place. Two veteran players, and you can see Zimba just dragged Beckett down on the play. The defensive ends, who have had seven of the 17 sacks for Arkansas, Beckett and Tenarius Wright, number 43, have been lined up real wide. The corral the quarterback. That's what Willie Robinson has told us. He wants to keep them inside. And they've been lined up real wide and coming from the outside. Third and 20 after the 30-yard game negated. Newton hands it off, and it'll be a punt. Just a footnote, in a come-from-behind win over Clemson, Auburn was guilty of four holding calls in that game. They've gone through the last three games with zero holding calls until Zimba gets called, and that wipes out a 30-yard gain for a first down. I think this Arkansas defense started to change when they put that pass rush on against Florida last year. It's been different for this defense ever since then. Joe Adams back to return the punt, and for the second week in a row, a true freshman, Stephen Clark, will punt, and this one is not going to be noteworthy. It does take uh, an Auburn bounce and comes to a rest inside the 45. The regular was Ryan Shoemaker, and uh, they decided to make the change last week. A 39-yard punt, five on the roll. 
And uh, Gene Chizik, second year head coach, Auburn. Big fella is healthy now, so that's uh, great news for all of us. First down and 10, Arkansas. Second possession, they've got the ball at the 45. As we mentioned earlier, five straight games with 300 yards passing. Whoops. A little motion on the left side, and now some finger pointing going on. Demarcus Love. Let's see who can win the debate. Ten wagers. Prior to the snap, offside, 45 on the defense. Five yard penalty, first down. Carter. He is offside. First down five. Yeah, I, I, I actually yard. thought it was Zach Clayton, the nose tackle, who kind of jumped in the middle of it that time. Josh Bynes was trying to shift them, but they did not do it very well. Here's the toss. Niall Davis goal. What a block he got from D.J. Williams. My goodness. Those uh, tight ends and linemen love it, but the block is out in the open. Yeah, see, D.J. is going to line up a tight end a lot, but he's also going to line in the H-back position, and you're going to see him a lot in the next level when he plays on Sunday, kind of going in this motion, and then backs up into the H-back spot, and then just arc blocks, and watch. Outside leg, what does he throw for, Vern? Outside knee. That's the vulnerable spot on that play. To Charvin Bell was the recipient of the block from D.J. Williams, first down. Right side, nice pass. On target to Jerry is right, but a good defensive job as DeMond Washington, number 14, was right there to apply the stop. Well, Ryan Mallett has been hot in the first halves of these football games. He started out 0 for 4, so if I'm calling plays, I'm going, he's due to get hot. <laughs> This is that pistol formation. Niall Davis comes right. Little bit of a crease as he rounds uh, the corner. Cuts inside the 35. Nick Fairley, number 90, who has been uh, outstanding this year. We mentioned at the outset, 12 and a half tackles for loss. He's also got an interception and five sacks. Nick Fairley, best of a very good defensive front four for Auburn. Yeah, Auburn's uh, Achilles heel is their secondary. Right. And, and, but now, Arkansas, two successful runs already in this football game. Ronnie Wingo is the deep back, number 20. Play fake, Mallet pulls it up, lobs it out, nice. Inside the 20 for the Razorbacks as Niall Davis makes the grab. That's a, a pickup of 14. There's the boot, and then there's the new play, the sneak. And this is one of those sneaks. The running back goes from one side and then crosses to the other side. Very difficult to stop unless you're very disciplined on defense. First down, 10, no score. Opening five minutes from Auburn, Alabama. Draw play. Davis hit behind the line and just does get back to the line of scrimmage. It was Nick Fairley again. Well, let's check the uh, red zone stats for the Razorbacks presented by Verizon. 12 of 17, 71% once they get inside the 20. And this is the part of the field that I think Ryan Mallett really needs to zone in on. He was suspect against Alabama. He needs to really keep his feet under him and throw with conviction. He'll spread him out. Three wide right, two wide left. One man in motion. Blitz. Mallet. Slant pattern. Got it. Broken tackle. Oh, boy. That's been a problem for Auburn despite their 6-0 record. Yeah. I tell you, Childs, he's big, he's tall, but you know what else he's good at? Is getting off on the line of scrimmage. Watch him avoid the jam and get it just too easy. Just way too easy with this level of expertise in throwing the ball. Third and one. They're going to get a timeout. They're going to have to call a timeout. They did. Timeout. 
That has been a problem. Uh, offensive line, communication on the road. They had a bunch of pre-snap penalties last week. Time called, 8.29 to go, opening quarter. First serious scoring threat of the first quarter. Arkansas with a third and one, and look at this graphic. On third and one to two yards, dead last in the SEC. Power formation, Broderick Green is the deep back, and the fullback is Van Steumann, number 44. It's Green, right tackle. He got it with that second little lunge. He got it, in, and uh, that was a big play for Arkansas, because I was wondering if Bobby would even go for it on fourth down. I, I was just thinking about what he would do, and you're right, it was his second effort on the play. But now it's going to be a tough seven yards here, or eight yards into the goal line. Auburn stopped him enough that you got to figure that if I was an Auburn fan, I'd say I can't let them run it in. Make him at least throw it. That's D.J. Williams setting up to the left side. Play fake, Mallet. Oh, he's got a man wide open. Oh, my goodness, there's a flag in the end zone. However, it's a touchdown as the play stands, and it's Van Steumann, number 44, his first catch. No wonder nobody paid much attention to him. Now then, Arkansas reacting as if it's going to be called against Auburn. Holding. Number 46 on the defense. Penalty to climb. Touchdown. Well, all of the surprises for the afternoon. Van Steumann, the fullback, with the reception. One of the things about Bobby Petrino is when he thinks about play calling, he thinks ahead one or two or three plays, and he knew eight yards would be tough, so he dialed that pass right on first down. That brings on Hawker for the extra point. Zach Hawker, number 18. It's up and good. My goodness. No surprise that Mallet threw it. Big surprise, Stuman caught it. Well, they shifted from the second receiver to the third receiver when the man went in motion, and that's what confused Auburn. He became the third receiver. They had him at one and two, but when they got the three, that was just a little too difficult. Razorbacks, come on the road and get the first TD of the afternoon. Next Saturday, it's a Mountain West showdown that could shake up the top 25. Catch Air Force take on TCU only on the CBS College Sports Network. You can build your own football dynasty and complete, you compete year-round with CBSSports.com Franchise Football on Facebook. Find out more at CBSSports.com slash franchise. Alex Tejada will kick off already this year. There's the uh, graphic on the touchdown drive. 55 yards in eight plays, and Stuman with the seven-yard pick. First reception this season, only the second of his career. You know, the key play in that drive for me, Vern, the holding penalty on the prior series. That's what set up, and then they got the poor punt, and then it was just a run into the end zone yeah, for this Arkansas know, offense. Funny, we were talking with Gene Chizik yesterday about when you look back, the small things yep, that seem yep. not so significant at the time, but that holding call on Zimba wiped out a 30-yard gain in the first down for Auburn. Here's the kick coming left. Down the sidelines. DeMond Washington with a huge return. 47 yards. Well, when we were talking about Auburn being able to find some help for Cam Newton, this was one of the things that he needed. Washington takes and gives this Auburn offense field position and answers that touchdown by the Arkansas offense. Tackle made by Modricus Humphrey, number 83. We mentioned it three weeks ago that his dad, Bobby Humphrey, a great player for Alabama. Modricus not offered there, and he wound up at Arkansas, and wow. Emery Blake, number 80, bad hands. Let's go back to the studio for a John Hancock update.
Vern, Nebraska had come into today's game against Texas never having fallen behind in a game. Well, Texas, after a turnover, gets this fake reverse taken in for a touchdown by quarterback Garrett Gilbert. They lead by 10. They haven't lost three in a row at Texas since 1999. Back to you. All right, Tim, thank you. Fake the reverse. Newton rolls out. And he decides to tuck it. Gets a hand on the ground to maintain his balance, and he is downed at the 44. We never did complete the Arkansas defensive line. It's Beckett, Davis, Jones, and Ambrose up front. Beckett with a fine season. Leon, Jerry Franklin leads this team in tackles, and he needs to communicate well today. And in the secondary, Broadway, Thomas, Krim, and Darius Winston gets the start. It's third down and three. And it's going to be offsides Arkansas though. Flags on the line of scrimmage. I think it was 92 Quinta Jones that time inside just trying to time that snap count. Offside on the defense. Five yard penalty results in the first down. Ah, you had better eyes than Penn Wagers did. He just he stayed generic. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what you do sometimes. <laughs> I, oh, I've, I've noticed that. Yeah, one of the big so guys on the side. <laughs> He's a very disruptive player, Jones is, but he tried to time that snap count and guess wrong. Uh, first down and 10. 7 0, Arkansas. Newton handoff. They try right side. Mario Fannin. A little bit of a surge, and he got him two extra yards. Yeah, when we talked to Gus Melzon, the offensive coordinator for this moving offense for Auburn, he says his goal, and he's never lost the game, is 80 plays. So we got a countdown play right here. There we did. Plays needed for 80. 74 more. It's kind of like beat the clock. <laughs> Newton, look at that little move. Look at that second move. Now, Yes. Vern, I have to correct you here. When you're 6'6", 250, there's no such thing as a little move. I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that. <laughs> the zone read. He keeps it. Makes one miss. Uh, makes another miss. And an easy 22-yard gain. And it'll be a quick snap. They love to go quick after a first down. Anthony Leon is a guy who tackled air on that play, number one. Now the look back over. At uh, Newton looks at Gus Malzahn and their other cars and cars. Oh, yeah, there's everything down there. Their signal they could land an aircraft, uh, yep. an aircraft with those semaphores. First down. All of that results in a pass here to the near side. This is Terrell Zachary at the five yard line. Rudell Krem finally caught up to him. Well, it was an easy play with a good block by Cody Burns. He once was a quarterback here. We'll get into the story of why that's such an important thing. Quick screen to the outside. Number 18 gets the block. You put that man on the ground like that, you've got a successful play. Second down, one. Newton has it up the middle. Oh. Touchdown! Oh, boy. My goodness. Yes. It was Jericho Nelson, number 31, who tried to make the tackle. Yep. Wound up on his back. And Auburn within an extra point try of tying it up. West Byram. He had one blocked earlier this year, so almost a sure thing. How about Cam Newton? Well, this looks familiar, and I know one group of fans, Florida fans, cover your eyes because this was your quarterback. And that's the way it used to happen, but doesn't happen anymore down in Gainesville. Cam Newton played one year at Florida, his freshman season, threw 10 passes, was going to play as a sophomore, injured after a couple of games, redshirted. There was an incident involving uh, a purchase of a laptop that turned out to have been stolen. 
That was resolved, not by Newton, by the way. That was resolved. It was when Tim Tebow, he told us, decided to come back for his senior season. Cam Newton decided, I'm going elsewhere. And he transferred, he opted to transfer to Blinn Junior College in Brenham, Texas. His dad was very much involved with the decision. He thought he needed to develop as a person and to play a lot instead of redshirting and sitting out. And th there's a whole lot more to the story that we'll talk about throughout the I I've never seen a guy score a touchdown and deliver a pancake block on the, on same, the same play. Well, we, we saw one for a few years, but it, not here. That's no. for sure. <laughs> it was that Gainesville school you're talking yeah, exactly. about, right? Yeah. Cover your eyes. <laughs> Byron with the kickoff. Joe Adams is again back. Number three controls this one well. And he's after the 22 yard line. All right, Gary, revisit the touchdown. Well, this was just a power play by Auburn. It's a, a play that's going to get a fold down block right here. Excuse me, right there. Down and down and just watch him follow. It's just like a tailback keep, but it's a fullback play. Zimba and Barry just fold it in. And then poor Nelson says, isn't there a weight limit or something here for quarterbacks? 7-7 seven, seven ball game. 53 yard drive and six plays. Cam Newton with a five yard run. Hand off right side, Niall Davis, maybe a yard. Well, Ryan Mallett, Cam Newton, the unquestioned stars offensively in this uh, important SEC battle. How are we doing so far? Let's see, on your left, Mallett started 0 for 4, hit his last four. So uh, the passing edge goes to Mallet, but you will not see him scampering like you will the guy on your right. And Newton has rushed for 35 yards already. Second down, still 10. Mallet has time. Delivers it to Niall Davis, who's cut down immediately by Nico Thorpe, number 15, the junior right cornerback. Nico Thorpe is going to play outside corner. It's a zone on the play. He kind of shoves his receiver to the outside and turns for the next one. And Niles Davis said, that's a nice reception, but that's a tough hit. You see, Auburn's had problems defending. Third down. All day for Mallet. Out of the backfield. What a fine. Open field stop by Zach Etheridge, number four. Young man who had a frightening injury a year ago against Ole Miss with a fractured neck, came back, got the doctor's approval in August to play, and he got help. It was Kobe Hamilton with the catch. Fourth and four. Here's Breeding. This one chases Quindarius Carr well back inside the 20 where he stumbles and is knocked down and a flag is thrown. was two really nice tackles by the Auburn secondary on back-to-back -back completions. In space, as yep. they say. Yep. During the return, illegal block in the back, number 11 on the receiving team. Can you have the distance to the goal? First down. It's on Chris Davis, number 11, a cornerback. And so the march will continue to the south. Seven seven ball game late first quarter. Arkansas scored on its second possession. The pass from Ryan Mallett to the fullback Van Steuben. And then uh, following a fine kickoff return. Auburn scored the equalizer on Cameron Newton's five yard touchdown run. You know if I was Arkansas and Willie Robbins right now I wouldn't panic. You know they had a successful drive when they scored. 
but I would not panic early in the game. I wouldn't change my game plan. I wouldn't try to oversell something to my defense. I'd say, we're solid. The guy made a good run against us in a broken play. Michael Dyer is in the backfield, the freshman who started the last three games. Tracy said uh, they were going to give him a little bit of a test and see if he could go full speed. And uh, there's uh, Tenarius Wright, number 43, to make sure he did not get up a full head of steam. Dyer from uh, Little Rock Christian Academy. He turned down Arkansas to come to Auburn. Yeah, watched him out there Thursday, and I, right away it, it, it popped out that he had a bad knee and was limping. But I did notice he practiced and went through every play, all practice. He wanted to play so badly. Mario Fannin takes his place. Here's Newton at the one yard line. Ooh, boy. And wide open on that little inside cut was Darvin Adams, number 89. Adams is the go to guy now. A flag after the tackle. This Somebody. is just passing 101. The slot goes on a little out route, and the wide receiver turns in, and he's open by 15 yards. And they may tack on that many here. After the play is over, or two pass, 28 on the defense, 15 yards, first down. And, and this was well after the play was over, too. Tackled, trying to rip the ball out, and throws him down. The whistle had clearly blown three, four, five seconds before they threw him down. Greg Gatson, backup cornerback. Here's Newton coming to his left. How about the pass route uh, run by Darvin Adams? It wasn't much. If you're a high school player or maybe even a junior high player, this guy goes out, this guy goes in, and where is everybody inside? Nobody around. Nobody around. Busted play right there for that inside slot guy, the defender for Arkansas. Following a one yard pass right, you got a drop in coverage. Second down six. Hand off right side. Ontario McCaleb, number 23, started his career at Auburn with 100 yard plus efforts in his first two games. And uh, yesterday, Gus Malzahn was saying, hey, he weighs 167 pounds. Not the biggest guy back there. Well, in the space offense that they run, he's very valuable at right. that size. Uh -huh. Couldn't line up a tailback and do it all year. Third and three, 7-7 seven, seven game. Jericho Nelson was thinking about yeah, coming they, to the Yeah, they, 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 they drew the look right here. So now Malzahn can change it. Will Arkansas switch it around, or will they still bring Nelson? Let's see. No, they stayed with the defense. I think Auburn took a timeout. They did. They did. Uh, Bobby Petrino is a little agitated. Yeah, it still goes back to that call after the pass. Both teams have used one timeout. We're tied at seven. The conversation will continue. Here are the rushing leaders among quarterbacks in Division One. Denard Robinson, of course, had uh, two games in which he passed for 200 and rushed for 200. There's Newton, currently third. Here's the quick count. Newton play action, deep right side. Oh my goodness! All by himself, his little wheel route down the sideline. Whoa! They practiced this play three times in a row in practice on Thursday, just working on this timing. He lines up in the backfield with a quick snap out of the huddle. Everybody rushes up. It's an on-balance line to the right, and they caught Arkansas misaligned, and it worked for a big play. Gain of 28. Newton hands it off. Oh, no, he didn't. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> How about that? I don't think I was the only one who thought Fannin was coming this way with the ball. I tell you, it didn't fool the defensive end. I think it was Miles Nash that time for Arkansas, but he ran right through the tackler. Was it Beckett? Either way, the guy with the defensive end body had to tackle the guy with another defensive end You're body right. at quarterback. Yeah, he walked on campus. Ted Roof, the defensive coordinator, said, oh, here comes my defensive rush in. Yes. No, 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 he's the quarterback. Clock winding down. Seven on the play clock. Fan in number 27. 
to the right of Cameron Newton. Corner blitz. Newton pulls up. Flag is down. See if that is the last play of the quarter. Yeah, it happened right in the middle of the line. It had to be either the center or one of the two guards. Right there in the middle of the screen is one of the most charismatic assistant coaches in college football, Trooper Taylor. There he is. He was at Tennessee on Philip Fulmer's staff, took an opportunity to come down to Auburn. I watched him play high school tailback at Cuero, Texas. Oh. I'm not, uh, yeah. <laughs> Holding. Holding number 50 on the offense. Ten yard penalty. Replay second down. The period is ended. This will be an untimed down. So we will stay in the north end of the stadium for this last play of the first quarter. Again, I think what you'll see from Arkansas here is trying to keep the two safeties back and kind of make everything happen in front of them here. Keep it to a short pass. Second down, 16. <laughs> Newton down the sidelines. That was intended for Cody Burns. He was recruited. He's a fifth year senior, was the quarterback, alternated for much of one season before moving out to wide receiver. That's the end of the first. We'll return to Jordan Hare Stadium after this message and a word from your local station. We welcome you back to Jordan Hare Stadium on the campus of Auburn University, Auburn, Alabama. Vern Lundquist, Gary Danielson, and Tracy Wolfson. Auburn has a chance to break the tie. They're looking at third and 16 from the 26 yard line. Three wides to the left and one wide right. That would be Darvin Adams. Now the look back over at the uh, Auburn bench. Ball. Oh dear. Through a knuckleball. I watched him for two hours. I didn't see one pass that didn't spiral. And this one, he had him so wide open, he threw it before he wanted to throw, and that ball just sailed. That could have been a touchdown. Yeah, that ball, that's one he'd like to have back. He never got over the top of that throw. It was, he was way underneath it. It just went way up in the air. That'll bring on Wes Byram, 8 for 11 this year. This is from 43 yards out. It will cut inside. And that's a new season high for Byram of 43 yards. Previous long was 39. He kicked the game winner last week in Lexington against Kentucky. But Newton missed a big opportunity. Beautiful view from overhead of this crowd in excess of 87,000 as Auburn has taken a 10-7 lead. We were just commenting during the break. Uh, we're used to a cauldron of right. noise hey. in most stadiums. It's a little lackadaisical here today. Well, my only theory is that these Auburn fans are pretty sophisticated. They've had two gimme wins, but in the four legit games, right. it's gone to the fourth quarter. So everybody's going, just settle down, huh. settle down. It's all in the fourth quarter. Right. <laughs> they just, just hang in there. Ryan's going to complete some passes. Cam's going to make some guys miss. It's all going to happen late. They do have a three-point lead, and they will kick off. Right now, the deep man is Kobe Hamilton, number 11. As uh, Joe Adams returned the first two, and obviously the Arkansas staff not that happy with 
The end result Byron will kick off. Kobe Hamilton probably the fastest guy in the football field. Yeah 200 meter dash man for the Arkansas varsity track team and that's one of the better track and field teams in college sports. Here's Hamilton at the goal line. Well you can't get up a head of speed if they nail you at the 10. Demetrius McNeil. Whoa. Oh boy. See you're not allowed to get out of your lane and track. <laughs> but in, in this sport they're allowed to go anywhere. <laughs> and oh man. <laughs> oh dear. Not a, I got to say not a lot of conviction from Kobe there on that kickoff return. He never got it in high gear. So from the 12 Ryan Mallett and the Razorbacks Ronnie Wingo is the running back. Nice play fake Mallett lobs it out. Wingo trouble hanging on and there's DeMond Washington number 14 with the tackle. Well let's take a look at the tail of the tape Ryan Mallett Cam Newton. Well, both they, six six. Yeah, both six six and both do what they do as well as anyone in the country. Ryan, of course, has got that big arm that can throw anywhere on the field, has thrown for 300 yards in every game. We talked about that. And Cam, we've already seen what Cam can do all over the field. He's a nightmare to stop. Both transfer students, as I think many of you know, Mallet began his career at Michigan, started three games as a true freshman, and this pass on the line and another fine open field tackle. Jarius Wright makes the stop number four. 19 yard gain. Let's go back to Tim in New York. Vern, this is one of those unbeatens that no one's talking about. Oklahoma State. Jeremy Smith is going to take it in from four yards out. They're leading at Lubbock and it's 21 nothing won there since 1944. So Tommy Tuberville's team struggling at home against the team that's undefeated. Back to you. All right, Tim, thank you. First down and 10. Left side. Well, Ryan Mallett wanted to play for Arkansas, but Mitch Mustaine was the quarterback. He went to Michigan, started three games, as we said. And there's Cam Newton wearing number 13 at Florida. And that was the year that a guy named Tebow got his Heisman Trophy and uh, they faced each other in one game when the that's right Florida played Michigan in the bowl game the cap one game second down left side Roderick Green number 29 into the secondary and out near the 50 he uh, appears to have been stopped at the 49 Mike McNeil number 26 made the tackle well I, I gotta believe Bobby Petrino is really happy with the way this game has started off his quarterback started off 0 for 4, okay? He's now 8 for 12. That means he's hit his last eight passes. He's been throwing it short. He hasn't had one close where he's tried to make too much happen. He's very patient, and they're in the football game, obviously. Four-man rush, Mallet. Caught. Jarius Wright, that's another Arkansas first down. Caught a tipped pass, too. That ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage, and Wright stuck with it. Mallet was going to deliver another fastball. Let's see. Yes, it was. You could see it. Knocked down right up front. I think it was Zach Clayton that yes. got his hand on it. It was. That's a gain of 16. Another Arkansas first down. At the 35, trailing by three. Mallet pumps once. Oh, his receiver slipped. And his receiver claims he was held. And his receiver, Greg Childs, does not win the argument. You can see what Arkansas and Mallet and Petrino have been trying to do. Remember those throws in the flat where the corner was coming in and hitting the running back with the tight end? They've been dropping off the receiver, so he's trying to throw behind the corner's back to the outside and get them to follow that receiver up the field. Childs. Alone top of the screen. That didn't look right. No, the draw right. play and then a little indecision right. at the point of the handoff. Yeah, I don't think the running back knew the play this time. That's Broderick Green, number 29. Yeah, he was just standing there when Mallet wanted to run the play. That was a mental error. You can't do that on second down. Now you got third and long. Arkansas needs nine. 
Childs sets up in the slot. Toss. Near side. Got the first down. How about that? Joe Adams, the wide receiver who lined up and took the toss. Everyone in the stadium, including yours truly, thought this was going to be a pass play. But he crossed them up. What did uh, Gene Chizik say to us about Bobby? He doesn't strong arm his offense. He doesn't want to force it into anything. He's very patient play caller, and you could see it right there. That was a gain of 12 on third and nine. Mallet, strong arms. This one, nice job of holding on by Kobe Hamilton. Same play again. They know that the corners are looking for the inside slot, and Milet is going over the top. He's going to read this guy. He's been making tackles on the slot. Now watch what he does. Milet has been throwing fastballs. He says he's squatting. I'm going right over his head, and he puts it up top for his receiver. You can't lay it up. He throws it like a bullet out there. Milet missed his first four, has hit 10 of his last 11. Here's the runner coming to the near side, Niles Davis. He had 18 carries last week. Uh, 10 carries, I beg your pardon, in that win over Texas A&M down in Arlington. Craig Stevens with the tackle. Niall Davis, they'll use all three running backs. And Dennis Johnson, who was a very important part of the ground attack for this team, suffered a very serious injury earlier this year. And Bobby Petrino telling us last night he's coming along. He's doing fine. 11th play of the drive that started at the 12-yard line. Green. Uh -uh. Well, there's been an absence of uh, a ground game this season for the Razorbacks, but the last couple of games, yep. look at that. Arkansas has been very successful running outside. Let's see if they go outside again and try to hook and get around this Auburn team. They need two. It's third and goal. Need two for the touchdown. Stuman is the fullback. Now he's a blocker to the right side as an old-fashioned wing. Mallet, as he lets it go, is hit. And it is, there is a flag. Oh, my. Oh, dear. That one came from 20 yards away. Nick Fairley was giving chase to Ryan Mallett and just about got there. Yeah, I think DeMond Washington, number 14. See, he doesn't know Mallett is under pressure and he could have laid off. He thinks Mallett's got an easy throw and he packed panics in the secondary. Pass interference. See, watch, he just grabs him with his left arm. Ah, that was that was close, but Mallet was under pressure. He had to let it go just to avoid a sack from Fairley. Now the reaction you hear that is... Was uh, a, that was a tweener. Well, yeah, you know, it looked to me like he was saying, why don't you just have a seat here? <laughs> Ushering him into the movie theater. Yep. Yeah, that was anything but a violent collision. However, touchdown, Arkansas. Roderick Green got the carry, and the Razorbacks have gone back on top. I'll tell you, they answered it. Mallet did it with those throws over the corner, and then just enough runs. How about that key third down and long running? 12 plays, 88 yards against this Auburn defense. Green got the touchdown. That key play to which Gary refers was the toss to Joe Adams, who lined up in the backfield. They're going to review They're it. They're going to review it. Okay. That's interesting. They don't tell us who the replay official is on the uh, official flip chart. Hmm. And here's Green. Did he break the plane? Looked like uh, he did from our vantage point, but this might be a little better view. 
I don't think there's any question about that. That third down run, that's the one that kind of broke. You know, that was the one that got the touchdown for Arkansas. There's no doubt about that. And they have uh, indicated to us the anonymous replay official has said, play stands. Zach Hawker is on to try the extra point. And of course the booing is still the prior penalty call. That's what the Auburn fans are yeah. reacting to. Arkansas leads by four. All right, let's take one more look at this. The back official right there is going to go. He's already reaching for his flag. He's got a direct line on Washington's left hand. He calls it, it comes out late, but he was reaching for it way before that, okay? So he saw the left hand. Let's see if we can see anything again. Right there is where he starts to call the flag. So he saw Washington's left hand tug his jersey or go around his stomach and that official threw it way before the crowd saw him throw the flag that's when he saw it. there's that delay reach and throw and so the kickoff 14 10 dehada demand washington grabs it at the four to the 20. Out to the 29, and let's uh, check in once again with Tracy Wolfson. Well, thanks, Vern. Let's go outside the huddle with Cam Newton. He's a big movie guy. His favorite actor, Denzel Washington. His pregame ritual, talking with his 12-year-old brother, Kalen, before the game. Kalen, meanwhile, an up-and-coming quarterback himself, plays for the Tigers. Besides football, his goal one day to open a daycare center, and after all, he spends every Monday working with kids at a local elementary school. And guys, just another reason to be impressed with this guy, huh? Well, he was something yesterday. He sure was. And what was intended to be about a 10 minute conversation was extended to yeah, he, 35 minutes. Good. Yeah. On first down. Out near the 35. Well, beautiful views on this spectacular Saturday afternoon, Jordan Hare Stadium. And aerial coverage of the SEC on CBS Sports provided by Goodyear. Second down, six. 14-10, Arkansas. Newton. That'll be another first down after the 40-yard line. Well, I think what you're going to see is, and I, I think this is where Gene Chizik goes over to Gus Belzon and says, you know, our defense just got gashed for 88 yards. Let's see if we can slow it down a little bit now, make some first downs. We don't need to be in a big hurry. Remember that 19-play drive they had to end the game against Kentucky? He'd like a few first downs and slow the clock down. Mario Fannin yep. bounces it to the outside. That's a missed tackle by the Razorbacks, and Fannin... Ridden out of bounds with another first down. 12-yard gain. Let's go back to Tim in New York. All right, Vern. Well, Gary, as you and I spoke earlier this week, what if one by one these undefeateds from BCS conferences go down? Garrett Gilbert gets his second touchdown rushing of the day. 17-3 horns in Lincoln. Back to you, Vern. All right, thank you, Tim. First down and 10 here. Yeah, the pressure is switching around, isn't it? Hmm. Newton. Avoids the tackle, avoids a second, Jeez. watch out, Jeez. avoids a third, and that is a small example, folks, of why this transfer from Blinn Junior College is on the short list, at least for now, of Heisman Trophy candidates. You know, I read this line about him. Uh, he was the most highly anticipated player in a generation here for Auburn, yet no one thought he would be as good as he's been so far. That's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Well, three times already this year, he's rushed for in excess of 170 in ball games, and he's having a splendid first half here. Play clock at two. 
Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. My goodness. I think uh, look at that is enough. A tight end body with wide receiver speed. Well, as if he needed help, Mike Berry supplied a block. That's yeah. a gain of 40 yards. Let's try it again. Not this time. Well, of course, he said to us yesterday he decided to transfer when Tim Tebow came back. But this is the comparison Tebow in 07, Newton. Yeah, in that's 10. the guy I think we talked about a couple times before. His Heisman Trophy winning season, and this just jumps out. Cam Newton, 6 and 0. Oh, I'm telling you, whichever quarterback wins this game is going to be right up there in the Heisman talk. Fannin. Touchdown. Oh, he dropped the ball. Did he really? Yes. It's out of there. As he was going in, the ball came out. Oh, my. I don't know if it was a bad. He had it, that's for sure. Helmet right on the football. And that's what caused it. It came out right before it got to the blind. It's very, very close. Jericho Nelson with the pop. Fannin lost his starting spot. He's had shoulder problems, but he's had fumble problems as well. The ruling on the field is a touchdown. Well, now we're going to review now it. The, the ball was laying on the field short of the line. Now the question is, did he cross the plane? Exactly. I saw the ball clearly laying on the field. And that is true. You can see Jermaine Thomas is the guy. Oh, I don't know. I'll tell you, I don't know. Now remember, Thomas is right in the way of the replay official. So the key point here is it's ruled a touchdown on the field. I didn't think he had it when he crossed the line. It's I between don't his feet. Thomas pushes it out right at the line. Now remember again, Vern, it was called a touchdown. Exactly. Jim Allison, by the way, is the replay official. I, 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 I got to say, you want me to guess? That they won't overturn it? Turn it? I, I don't know if they've got enough to overturn yeah. it. Because in the one view that you could tell, he's being blocked. Logic tells you he doesn't have it. Right. There it comes out. But you can't tell from Not that from there. angle. You can't tell if he's crossed, if the, he's crossed plane. the plane. It goes all right. the way up in the air. How close is that? Now, Tremaine Thomas, it was Jericho Nelson with the first hit, then number five, Tremaine Thomas. Logic tells you he didn't cross, but vision doesn't. This is a very interesting one. I don't think you're allowed to speculate. That's the funny part of this one. Mm -hmm. Was, was the ball in his possession right. when he is said to have crossed Remember, the Remember, it was Thomas's right hand we saw from behind is the one to tap the ball out. Right. Now, if you put the two pictures together, you say, oh, my God, he didn't cross it. But there is no picture to verify that. I am not a fence sitter, but I'm right in the middle. Here. The ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. That's what I thought. No visual evidence, right? Yeah. And so the significant thing is to call on the field. I, uh, Gary, I did not see a touchdown signal, Good which is, uh, Good but. Can I read the rule? You bet. The replay official may reverse a ruling if and only if the video evidence convinces beyond all doubt. 
ball down. Extra point is up and good. It was called a touchdown. It stands as a touchdown. Though you get a pretty good argument from Bobby Petrino. Bobby Petrino's aggressiveness with his uh, displeasure in conversation with the officials continued during the timeout. Here's I, an interesting shot, Gary. I, I'll tell you what Bobby Petrino's saying. He's saying, who called the touchdown? Because you'll see one official down on the bottom throws the bag. The umpire doesn't single touchdown. Who signals touchdown is what Bobby Petrino is saying. That's the blimp shot. Watch down here. This official throws he the bag. That and symbolizes a fumble right there. We're still looking for somebody, one of the officials, to signal who signaled touchdown is what Bobby Petrino's saying. He's arguing the opposite. He's saying the officials on the field ruled it a fumble. That's his argument. Life in the SEC. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, just as a, as a parenthetical expression here, the commissioner, Mike Slive, is in attendance. He's used to it, I guess. <laughs> uh, indeed. <laughs> Kobe Hamilton will return the kick. Runs up, grabs it at the 14, out of bounds at the 25. All right, we need a little calming influence of the surf right now. Well, that'll work. Monday. <laughs> on CBS. Hawaii 5 is turning up the heat and laying down the law. Don't miss TD's number one new show, Hawaii 5 Monday only, CBS. Now, now, my wife watches this show, okay? And she says it's not calming. It's all intense. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. New quarterback in now. There's a reverse. Near side. Jarius Wright breaks a tackle. Tyler Wilson was the quarterback. And there are two flags back inside the 15-yard line. <laughs> Wilson, I'm guessing, in only for that one point. No, I, I, I can't even imagine they take him out for a reverse. That just almost... Yeah, I wonder if... if I'm sure Tracy's going to hustle over and see if Mallet... If, yeah. Illegal block in the back. Number 71 on the offense. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. Down in third. That's Wade Grayson. We have uh, an unconfirmed report that he went into the locker room. Remember that throw, that penalty throw to the end zone where I said that Washington had no idea that Mallard was under duress? Right. That has to be the play. Well, we've got the Wolf on the trail. On first down, Wilson from the backside. He's got a man deep, and it's overthrown. Incomplete all the way to the 40-yard line. Intended for Kobe Hamilton, the speedster. Tyler Wilson, a sophomore out of Greenwood, Arkansas. I don't think he expect to, uh, expected to play in this one. Here's Mallet, and that's fairly. Hey, lands on him. You know, that could be left arm, left rib cage. And we are told now, Tracy, in the vicinity of the Arkansas bench, and they are refusing to give any information on where he is or what his problem might be. Meanwhile, there's an injured player at the 35-yard line. To Charvin Bell is the injured player. We'll take a timeout. Back in Alabama right after this. Tim Brando in New York coming up on the Geico Halftime Report. Spencer Archie and I will get you caught up on all the action, including Florida State is 4-0 in the ACC for the first time since 4 Burt Reed with the reverse takes it in as the Seminoles beat D.C. Now back to Arkansas and Auburn. 5.57 to go and concern now for uh, the status of Ryan Mallett, the outstanding quarterback. This is the play. We surmise he was injured on this play when tackled. Uh, that appears to Stay, be. Stayed in for the next play. That was the yep. fourth down handoff. He raised both arms. You could see that. His left arm didn't go real high on the play, but he did raise it a bit. And we did not see him leave the field. 
Tyler Wilson playing in only his second game. Now, during the timeout, Ryan Mallett's father got on the cell phone. And he was, this was uh, a moments ago. This is Jim Mallett. And I don't have any idea to whom he was speaking, but he was trying to get some information, and we don't know whether or not he uh, got the information he was desirous of. Here's Wilson across the middle, caught Jerry's right. And for uh, what we know, here's the lady in the know. Here's Tracy. Well, guys, as you mentioned, Arkansas will give me no information whatsoever. They said that he is in the locker room and they will be evaluated for a knee injury. That, though, is coming from Auburn sideline. That's how I found out the information. We probably will receive nothing until after half, guys. All right, Trace, thank you. 17-14, 5.25 to go in the first half. They loaded up three wides to the right side. Wilson, handoff. Running back, Rod, uh, Ronnie Wingo, rather, and Wingo is going to be short of the first down. And it would appear the Razorbacks are going to uh, have to give it up. Yeah, now, now this becomes very critical to stay in this football game. They must get a stop. Remember, Auburn gets the ball to start the second half. This could be three straight possible possessions, basically, for Auburn. A touchdown, Newton engineered it with the long run. Then they get a quick stop with the backup quarterback in. They get the ball, and they could get it again to start the second half. Dylan Breeding is on to punt for the Razorbacks. Oh, the rush is coming, and they got it. Deflected, out of bounds at the 25. They brought the rush. Antonio Goodwin with the deflection. He went right by the three blockers and then just ducked in. I think he was the third man in from the bottom. I think he's right here. Watch his action. Three men. Comes in, not touched, and not touched again. No one touches him at all. A run right at the punter. Weiss runs by two Arkansas blockers. So with the deflected punt, Auburn takes over Cam Newton five yards back. Watch out, Cody Burns can throw it, but it's well covered. Diving try, Emery Blake. Cody Burns, who started half a season as a quarterback. A matter of fact, he was uh, signed by Auburn. <clears throat> Excuse me. Great play by Isaac Madison that time, number six. He did not fall for it at all. Auburn tried to steal one there. Newton so effective, they tried to get a trick play off the option pass. Eric Smith is the H-back, number 32, to the right side. Here's Newton. He's got that play down. Well, Newton is averaging 17 rushes per game. And you can understand why. He already has 11 in this game. And he just runs it right up the gut. Newton for over 100 yards already. 106, first half. Watch out. Strolling into the end zone. Ontario McCaleb. 13-yard gain. And a touchdown. McCaleb's third touchdown of the season. Wes Byram with the extra point. It's good. A controversial touchdown call goes Auburn's way. A Look deflected up. punt, and now this TD. They moved Lee Zimba over. The up tackle to the right side at tight end. Jerry Franklin says, I got to stop Newton. Watch that. They moved the tight end. Zimba gets the big block. Inside Franklin stays for Newton. A well-designed play, and they caught Arkansas flat-footed. Eric Smith also a part of it. And in a two-minute span, Gene Chizik's team has extended its lead. 
Gene Chizik in his second year as the head coach. Had two years at Iowa State, former defensive coordinator here. Don't ever believe he's uh, just a placid man. Look at this reaction. Ryan Pugh, the head coach Chizik. Ontario McCaleb. And you see the first guy he hugged there, Vern, was Gus Malzahn. And he did that because that's a coaching staff. That was a schemed play. They prepared for it. They had it in the arsenal. That's exactly what they prepared for. And that's why he hugged Malzahn. That's exactly what we thought we'd get, and they got it. Gus Malzahn, of course, the highly successful high school coach. Springdale, Arkansas, offensive coordinator for Houston Nutt at Arkansas. He brought with him Mitch Mustaine as a freshman who started eight games, and Mustaine's presence at Arkansas was the reason Ryan Mallett chose to first enroll at Michigan. Now out to the 34-yard line. So small little relationships between these two teams. And Malzahn, interesting, Gene Chizik said yesterday, no, I didn't know him at all. He was at Tulsa after his stint at Arkansas, and he said, I called him, and I said to Gus Malzahn, give me your three best running plays that you can hang your hat on. That's and they found drive. out that they had a lot in common, and he offered him the job. First down and 10. Still Tyler Smith. We still have not received any word on Ryan Mallett's status. He is in the locker room. That's the best we know. And, and what do you do now if you're Bobby Petrino calling plays? I'll tell you what you have to do. Survive the first half and stay in the football game. They don't want to give the ball back again, and Auburn's got two timeouts still left in this first half. If there's not a pickup, a significant pickup here, you may see Chiswick just call a timeout. Backup quarterback in the game. Niall Davis is the running back. Little flip out on the right side. That's caught. There's a missed tackle. And this is Joe Adams. And they got the first down. Clock will stop for the moment now when they reset the chain. Yeah, that, that's just surviving the first half right now. Now he feels that Tyler Wilson can now run some plays. Okay, Joe Adams, so good at making people miss once he gets the football, makes one guy miss, two guys miss, and gets a big first down for this Arkansas team. They want to survive to see if they have Mallet for the second half, settle down at halftime. Any points will be a bonus. Whoops. Wilson knocked down by Nosa Igwe, number 94, young man from Mansfield, Texas, who became a starter three games ago. Beat out of senior Mike Goggins. And it's second down. Remember, Tyler Wilson had all of the snaps in spring football because Mallett had the surgery, so he has plenty of experience running this offense in spring football. Right. <laughs> Oh, he was looking left the whole way, and he is caught and dropped. First guy was Nick Fairley. I don't know who cleaned it up after that. I think Fairley's going to get credit for the sack, and if so, it's number six on the season. Fairley came in first, number 90. And then Blanc might have get it at the end. I don't know. He might have just tripped him, but you're right, Vern. I mean, Fairley gets it in there. He has been almost unblockable. Third and 17. Wilson pulls up, lets it go, man open. First down, Arkansas. At the 30-yard line, the catch made by Joe Adams. Well, one thing you know about a Petrino quarterback, you're not getting a scholarship unless you can throw the football, because that's what he does. Wonderful feel that time by Adams finding the kind of soft spot in the zone and setting down for his quarterback to make a throw. It's a huge drive for Arkansas. That was a gain of 24. It looks bad, but a field goal is big for Arkansas. Makes it a seven-point game. Lance Ray on the field. Here's a draw play. Left side, one-on-one. -on -one. Down the sidelines and out of bounds goes Niall Davis. Another first down. He better be careful. He got a call. Niles Davis. Jeez, oh, man. And he's getting it from his DeMarcus Love, his tackle right there. What are you thinking, son? Your team is trying to survive, and you just got selfish. 
Take a look at the end of the play, thus the flag. Just go back to the huddle. He wouldn't start yapping, and he got the flag. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. After the play's over, unsportsmanlike on number seven of the offense. The result of the play was a first down. First down. And it wasn't just me that was upset. Watch DeMarcus Love, number 65, grab him and say, what are you doing? We're trying to win an SEC championship. And then Ray Dominguez came over to give, uh, give him an earful, and now he's going to get it on the sidelines. I mean, he's had a good football game. Yep. It was a great run, but you got to calm down and get back to the huddle. So after the penalty, first down. At the 34. Wilson, deep right side, man coverage. Battle. Is it caught? It is. Touchdown. Greg Childs, number 85. <laughs> Childs hands it to him. You see that? Boy, Nico Thorpe is going to want this one back, Vern. Ball up in the air, good position. Turn around and find the ball. He never looked back for the ball. So with Ryan Mallett in the locker room for the last two series, with uh, an injury, the knowledge of which we don't have, Tyler Wilson comes on and throws the touchdown with 106 to go before the break. How about an impressive drive was that, huh? With your backup quarterback. Like I say, if you're going to get a scholarship for Petrino, you got to be able to throw the ball. Seven plays, three of them passes, and he puts it right to the outside, and Childs gets some separation and gets the touchdown. A little bit of a teeter-totter in this one, huh? Coming up, the Geico Halftime Report with Tim Spencer. Archie Manning is with him. And they'll get you caught up on everything going on in college football on this uh, Saturday in October. You just kind of love college football. You know, you get a penalty, it's first and 20. You think, all right, defense has got it. And, you know, the chains are in their side. First play touch, bang. Well, remember, they overcame a third and 17. Absolutely. With a 24-yard game. That was the game. scramble out uh, yeah. by uh, two big plays by the backup quarterback. Three-point margin, 66 seconds to go before the break. Tejada will kick it off. And this will result in the touchback. That's his eighth touchback. <laughs> I'm laughing because of what card I've got in my hand here. <laughs> Wednesday on CBS, it's a survivor shocker. This is appropriate. When individual immunity is up for grabs and both tribes go to council. Oh, it sounds serious. Don't miss a new Survivor Wednesday only, CBS. Jimmy Johnson is not on that show. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't seen any Jimmy on there. I think he's gone. He got the hook early. Really interesting calls here now for Auburn. Backed up. You know, they got a minute. They got a game-breaking quarterback. But a big mistake here. You know, I mean, you know, the risk-reward. Let's see what kind of trust he has in his outstanding junior quarterback here. First down, 10. Roll out. There's a run all the way. Yes, it was. And why not? He picks up eight. Jericho Nelson with the tackle. You know, it's interesting. We were talking about Auburn's plays that they wanted 80. And as you can see, he's getting, that's Mr. Mallet getting information about Ryan. That is Zach Higby on your left in the suit, media director, and that's Jim Mallet. So Zach Higby. Uh, obviously, Jim Mallett now knows uh, the status of his son. We do not know. We've not been told anything. Put the wolf on Mr. Mallett. Yeah. He doesn't right. know what he's in for, does he? <laughs> There's the first down. Clock stops. On the first down, momentarily, 54 seconds to go. Auburn does have two timeouts remaining and another player down. And that's DeQuinta Jones. Now he's up. Looks like he's fine. Under 50. Blitz. Newton lets it go. Caught at the 45-yard line. 
Newton about to get nailed. Just, it didn't matter. How about Willie Robinson coming with an all-out blitz and going man-to-man -man coverage on this situation? Now it's an option at least for Byron to get a field goal try. That's a gain of 20. Surprising defensive call there. Mm -hmm. Again, again. Here goes Newton. Yep. Comes right, goes left. Enjoy the Heisman conversation, Cam. Absolutely. A blitz again, man to man in the secondary. Nobody's got the rise on the quarterback. And Newton is dangerous in the second. It wasn't dangerous anywhere. That is a gain of 29 yards. Auburn will use its second timeout. He's run for 143 yards in the first half. He's right on average. Jeez. Now, now it's time to take a look at our Home Depot tools for success. Wonder who this might be. Well, the guy's got a lot of tools. I mean, he, as we said, had a defensive end body and wide receiver speed. I mean, he's faster than Tebow, I will tell you that. I'm not putting him in Tebow's class, obviously, but he does have that big playability when he has the ball in his hands. He can run play action passes all by himself. He doesn't need to fake to anybody. And when you try to make a tackle, you've got five, nine defensive backs trying to tackle him in the secondary. And they had to take a timeout. He's out of gas. <laughs> Well, he went to Blinn so he could grow up and learn to play, and they did some research. Blinn Junior College coached by Brad Francione, whose father, Dennis, right. was once the coach at Alabama, later at Texas A&M. Here's Newton. Steps back, keeps it, lobs it out, man open. That's Mario Fannin, and he is going to be brought down at the eight-yard line. It's a big no first down, because a first down would have stopped the clock. There is a flag. And it's thrown here at the six yard line on the near side. Didn't see that. And a player is down as well. We think it's Brian Jones, number 54. Really don't know. I think it might have been late in the play. Might have been Ryan Pugh late in the play, blocking downfield the center for Auburn. If so, that's a big penalty. It's going to move it back. Mm -hmm. So attention being paid to the injured player. Now they'll bring the uh, chain all the way across, and we still have no indication of the penalty. I thought it was short by a, a few inches from the first down. And everything happened real, real late. That flag came out real late. So the measurement, and uh, it'll be second down. After the play is over, dead ball, personal foul on number 50. 15 yards, second down. And Ryan Pugh hustling. This is a hustle penalty. I mean, this was Caroline. His guy's up there getting hit by three or four Arkansas Razorbacks, and he comes in late and delivers a blow actually from behind that time against Rudolph Krim. Late, a little late and from behind. And it is Brian Jones, the injured player, the penalty on Pew as he hit Rudolph Krim and Jones limping off without assistance. See him top of the screen. So it's second down and 16. Six penalties already in this ball game. Right. I, you wonder now, second down, will Auburn take one shot to the end zone? They got 17 seconds, but more importantly, they have a timeout left. Will they try to throw one deep? And the look again, by the way, from Willie Robinson is that he's going to bring them. Looks man to man again. And he does. Newton. Man coverage near side up in the air. Flag. You bet. Two flags. Wow. That was a long play. Did that play take 17 seconds? Oh my gosh. It, the clock well, must have marked, stopped before yeah. they started. Yeah, they must have started the clock. Yep. Took my eyes, was watching downfield. That's close. 
had there not been a flag that's moving into less miles territory. <laughs> We're going to see the Mad Hatter here in Auburn Can't next wait. week. Yeah. Can't wait. Yeah. When you have a number with a zero after that, that's good Pass coaching. Interference. Number 26 on the defense. 15 yard penalty. First down. So before the play was snapped, they started the play clock. Look at how it went down. That's what happened to Les Miles. The play got started. Now what do you do? Do you kick a field goal or do you try to get a touchdown? Well, they call timeout to discuss it as the game clock winds down to one. You know what? Wasn't it here that he went for the end zone with a second left Les Miles we're talking about? 2007. And Demetrius Bird caught a touchdown pass. Yeah, it, it ended up with the second left. He didn't go. Yeah, for that, it you're right. Left. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. So now I, I think you just don't you just have to kick the field goal and take the three points. You can't afford. It. I mean, if it, was, if it was the two yard line and Newton was in right. there, I'd say it's worth the gamble. But I, I just take the three points. You know, it's going to come down to the fourth quarter anyway. Well, you got Wes Byram, who is on the verge of becoming the all time leading point scorer. He's going to surpass his old teammate John Vaughn here shortly and he already is the uh, leader in career field goals made this from 26 yards out Neil Caudle is the holder Bobby Petrino calls timeout now let's uh, revisit the play in which Ryan Mallett the Arkansas quarterback was injured play action Fairly chasing him down. We're not going to speculate on what it was. We hope to find out from Bobby Petrino as we uh, go into the halftime break. But Mallet has been in the locker room ever since. That's his dad on the left. And, and Mallet had started the game 0 for 4. He was 10 for 15. He was having his normal game. Not a lot of yards he didn't throw for. But Tyler Wilson comes in his backup and goes 4 for 5 and leads him down for a touchdown. Debbie Mallet, his mom, who was sitting alongside her husband, has left that seat. I'm just going to guess she might have gone down to the Arkansas locker room. Now here's Byron. 26-yard field goal attempt. Neil Cottle will hold. Perfect. Gosh, anything go on in the first half? Just 48 points. An injury to a Heisman hopeful. And two of the teams that control their destiny, well, at least Auburn does. I don't know about Arkansas yet, but two significant teams. Twenty seven twenty one at the break. Let's go down to Tracy who's with coach Bobby Petrino. Thanks Vern. Coach can you tell us what happened to Ryan Mallett. Uh, he got hit in the head. That's all I know. It's a head injury. I guess. Do you expect him to return in the I second. I have no half? idea. How about Tyler Wilson and the job he did on that drive coming in. He did a great job. He can really throw it. He did a nice job of being patient and everybody rallied around him and really did a good job of playing hard. Still though you've given up 143 yards rushing to Cam Newton alone. How do you slow him or contain him. Well, we're not playing hard enough up front and, st and staying in our gaps and recognizing their blocking schemes. We really got to do a much better job in the second half. Thanks a lot. Back to you Vern. All right Tracy. Thank you. That's the end of the half with a score 27 21. Now let's go to Tim Brando in our New York studio. Is 27 21 undefeated Auburn leading once beaten Arkansas just a moment ago the Arkansas Razorbacks led out of the locker room by Tyler Wilson. He's on in place of an injured Ryan Mallett for an update. Here's Tracy with Bobby Petrino. Coach, can you give us an update on Ryan Mallett? He's been diagnosed with a concussion. He's out for the game. What did you tell Tyler Wilson before he took the field? Tyler just needs to relax and do what he can do. He's a great thrower. He's very confident. Did an excellent job moving us down. I've got all the confidence in the world in him. 
Um, there was a huddle right before everyone took the field. What was said inside of it? I don't know. I didn't get in. <laughs> Finally, the adjustments you need to make in the second half. Well, we really got to do a better job on the quarterback runs, the quarterback zone, and the draw play, and make them get to third and long. If we can do that, we got a chance to have success. Appreciate it. Good luck. Thank you. All right, Tracy, thank you. So Ryan Mallett injured with nine. We think the injury occurred uh, when he was uh, brought down by Nick Fairley. 9.42 to go in the second quarter, diagnosed with a concussion and uh, will remain in the locker room for the remainder of the game. That's uh, Wilson who came on and led them to a touchdown. Tejada will kick off. Auburn will get the ball to open the third quarter. Washington and McCaleb are the deep men. This will be DeMond Washington. It slips through his hands. This will be a touchback and will come out to the 20 yard line. Well, Gary, I had a chance to talk with Keith Jackson, the great all Oklahoma All-American who does radio for Arkansas. Right. He was very positive about Tyler Wilson. Now, how do you think Mallet's absence will affect him? Well, I don't think it can affect Arkansas. I think Petrino has to know that he's not likely to stop this Auburn offense and Cam Newton. So he has to call plays and not coach around his quarterback. He needs to attack because he knows that he's not just behind by six points he may be behind I mean there might be two more touchdowns at Auburn scores so he's going to need more than just one to win this game Auburn will open Cam Newton who had a splendid first half of play on first down and ten sweep McCaleb near the 30 just short of the first down Well, you know that Arkansas, as Bobby Petrino told Tracy, was in there saying, how do we stop Newton? So what do you do? You start out with a speed sweep. Good play calling. McCaleb with the touchdown in the first half. Here's Newton again up the middle again. And uh, first down at the 40-yard line. Take a look from up on top. We've seen a lot of these type of guys. This is a power play. Pull the backside guard, just a power O. Every running play that Auburn has, they have a connected play for the quarterback. Tailback, quarterback, same plays. There's the tailback, Mario Fannin, number 27. The starter, Mike Dyer, gave it one play. He did not start the game. Uh, Tracy got the information from uh, Gene Chizik that uh, Dyer would go to see if he was effective and he was not. So I'm sure he'll sit out the rest of the game. He's the freshman out of Little Rock. There's Newton. How about these trends in the first half? Well, you know it's got to be about the two quarterbacks, one injured Mallet, but let's start with Cam Newton. 230 of his 270 accounted for for the whole offense, obviously running and passing. Brian Mallet left the game with a concussion. The most important thing, I think, is the seven points scored by Arkansas at the end of that drive. That kept them in the game. Sweep right. Fannin cuts back to the 45-yard line. That's a gain of almost five Mario yards. Jerry Franklin, number 34, leading tackler for the Razorbacks, was there in the middle. I really don't know what you do if you're Arkansas. You tried to play zone, you tried to corral him, you tried to blitz him, nothing worked. And here's Fannin breaking a tackle. It, you know, it's not like you got any subs on your bench no. that, that are any different. I think what Petrino told Tracy is right. If we don't win up front with our front four, we have no chance in this game. Beckett, Davis, Jones, Ambrose, Wright, Miles Nash, those guys have to make plays. You know, we mentioned that uh, Cam oh, began his career at Florida, and then played at Glenn Junior College, in Brenham, Texas. Here's the Aflac Duck, and it is time for the trivia question: Who was the only transfer player to win the Heisman Trophy? I think this is a good one. Not that that matters. Well, these two guys were both in the hunt, and I, right. I don't, I don't remember one in recent memory. Again, Mallet began his career at Michigan. Transferred to Arkansas. Here's Newton back. Oh, watch out. There he steps out of that tackle. Looks for a block. Doesn't need it. Goes right. Out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. 
27 yards on that game. Boy, everybody that has a six foot five, 250 pound high school kid is going to put him at quarterback after this, aren't they? <laughs> My goodness. Goes right through Beckett, kind of kicks out of it, you know? Fannin. Well, the, the stats are becoming gaudy now for Cameron Newton, the 6'6 quarterback. In this game now, 16 carries for 186 yards. This is the fourth game this season out of seven or six and a half in which he has gained over 170 yards. Got a little note here. Should they put a spy on Cam Newton? I said, if it's not Ray Lewis, it's not going to work. And there's a sack. Well, the red zone stats now as we go inside the 20. Brought to you by Verizon. Five trips today, and they've scored on each one. Five, uh, two field goals, three touchdowns. Fannin is the running back. Mike Berry, number 66, has had a really good day. Into the right corner, up in the air, caught. No, out of bounds. That was Terrell Zachary, number 81. Covered by Darius Winston, number 21. He got his right foot down, but it was clearly on the line. A little dark right there, but his right foot comes down right on the line. Good call. That's going to bring Wes Byram on. He's two for two today. This will be from 28 yards. Josh Harris is the snapper. Neil Caudill puts it down. The kick is up. Got it. And on the opening drive of the third quarter, the Tigers increase the lead now. 30-21. Times the eyes have it. Do they ever? College football again next Saturday on CBS. We've got a doubleheader for you. We'll begin at 12 Eastern time. Notre Dame makes its uh, once every two year visit to Annapolis to take on Navy. And then Gary Tracy and I and our whole crew, our crew will be back here for the 3.30 game. LSU plays McNeese State today, tonight rather. And they'll come in here to take on the Auburn Tigers. 30-21, 10-44 to go in the third quarter. Yeah, and impressive that drive was. Remember, Cam made all those plays on it. The stop for no touchdown, again, just surviving right now for Arkansas until they can get their offense going. They know they can move the ball against this Auburn secondary. Kobe Hamilton back to return. The punt, West Byram will kick off. Hamilton, two yards into the end zone. And for the second time in this ball game, nailed inside the 15-yard line. Emery Blake, number 80, the wide receiver, led the special teams. Now Red Lobster presents today's scholar athlete. Where's number four for Auburn? Zach Etheridge graduated in December 2009, working toward a second degree with a GPA of 3.45. Red Lobster's commitment to the investment of our future. Shown today by donating a thousand dollars to Auburn University's General Scholarship Fund. Tyler Wilson at quarterback. We will not see Ryan Mallett for the remainder of the day. And the handoff goes to uh, Brandon Broderick Green. He runs into Zach Clayton, number 98. DJ Williams has been a little quiet in this mm, football yes. game for Arkansas. He'd be a very Nice target for your backup quarterback to get the ball to. He had one block, one catch I think he had early, as I remember. Van Steuben is the fullback now in this high formation play. Play action. Wilson pulls it up. There you go. Right on cue. DJ Williams makes the catch. Yeah, you got a backup quarterback. I've done this, Verna, as a backup quarterback. I did it. 
you know, you don't get a lot of snaps, so you got to keep your head in the game as a backup quarterback and be ready mentally. You stand in the back of the thing and you just pretend you're out there running every play. But as a play caller, Petrino's got two things going. He knows he's got to score because they're not having great success stopping Auburn, but you also have to protect your quarterback a bit. Tight end usually answers that. Third and one. Play action. Wilson, a lot of time. Man open, incomplete. Had to go up, and the catch to the stop is made by DeMond Washington. A flag is down. Hit to the head of the quarterback? Yes, it is. That was an unusual play call there, wasn't it? A mm. deep ball on, a, on a, a third and short. Maybe the guy to the short play was not available to get. I think it was Igwe. It was. The passer. Number 94 on the defense. 15-yard penalty. First down. Nosa Igwe. Yep. Redshirt freshman out of Mansfield, Texas. We mentioned he was given the starting spot three games ago. Now that's the reaction of the crowd watching the replay. Now here's Mallett on the left and Wilson on the right. Ryan Mallett, remember, started 0 for 4. And then he hit uh, six out of 11 before the injury. First down and 10. Wilson, the six foot three inch, 215 pound red shirt sophomore. Right side. Oh, he got loose. That's Ronnie Wingo, number 20. Hank, now the practice that Wilson got this spring when Ryan Mallett was the guy standing behind the huddle is really paying off for your backup quarterback. I, I mentioned Keith Jackson who is uh, I think many of you remember was uh, an All-American at Oklahoma tight end played with Philadelphia now does Arkansas radio. He thought Wilson would play very well. Said he's patient. And uh, here's the Joe Adams catch. That's another first down. Yeah, I, I kind of uh, chuckled. He said he doesn't have a big arm. Well, nobody has a big arm next to Ryan Mallett. <laughs> One of the things at this stadium that is a little bit different, and Tyler Wilson has to note this, he doesn't have a lot of experience. The play clock is situated very low on the field. A lot of traffic between him and that play clock. It's not up there. Look at that. That's only like eight feet off the ground. Mm -hmm. Tough one to find. Action again. Flag. This one could come back. I'm just guessing. At any rate, DeMond Washington knocks it down. It was intended for Greg Childs, but it's going to be holding. Yeah, interesting decision here for Gene Chiswick. Incomplete pass, second and ten. You're going to move him back ten yards? I say you yes. Think he would? Yeah. Mentioned before, Gene Chiswick was the defensive coordinator here for three years. He and Bobby Petrino on the staff for one year, 2002. Petrino, the offensive coordinator. Uh, Petrino left, took the Louisville job. Holding, 71 on the offense, 10-yard penalty. Down remain first. Tommy Tuberville, of course, was the head coach uh, in 2002, and they're right in the middle. Mr. Chiswick and Mr. Petrino. Got the idea in separate conversations that they went about their business and both family guys, Gene Chiswick said, we didn't have a lot of time to spend a lot of right. time together. First down, 20. Wilson rolling right. This is uh, escapability he has, but uh, wow. And none of the receivers were able to come back and help him on the play. They were in the middle of their routes way downfield, and by the time they turned around to look to help, it was almost too late. Mike Blanc, number uh, 93, is the guy who was chasing. Lance Ray got it. 30 to 21 is the score now. Undefeated Auburn at home. It was 24 21. They've gotten back to back field goals, but the key for the Razorbacks the concussion suffered by their uh, quarterback, Ryan Mallett. With 9.42 to go in the first half of play, he is not going to play for the rest of the ballgame. 
On the draw play, left side on second down. And they move it out to the 48 yard line. It's Ronnie Wingo, number 20. Uh, let's revisit this uh, Ryan Mallet injury. It came on a play fake, and they went for the uh, touchdown pass in the end zone. Back, chased by Fairley. We think that's when it happened. Yeah, he ran, we, we looked at his ribs, his arm, but evidently on the other side of the pile there, his head hit the ground, and that was the concussion. The other point here was a very controversial call of a touchdown and or a fumble. It was ruled on the field a touchdown for Auburn. Inside route, it'll be fourth down. That's Joe Adams, number three. And that in between field right now, do you punt it or do you go for it? Well, let's see. 6.45 to go, clock running. Fourth and six. He's going to go for it. Wingo, DJ Williams are in. Tyler Wilson on fourth down and six. Auburn comes across the middle, diving catch. Short. short. He was short. caught it, but he's short. I believe the ball will be spotted at the 38-yard line in between the 37-38. And, 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 and this will be, if it's close, I think this is a reviewable play, obviously. It is very close. Tyler did not get a lot on this. It's a hot throw. He's got the tight end wide open. If he delivers it to G.J., it's an easy first down. The ball was way short, and now the official gave him a good spot. Let's see if it's good enough to start with. Oh, it, my it goodness. Is. But now, where did the ball? Now, this one will be reviewed. Okay, this one you got to see where. And if I was Ar Arkansas, I would do a quick snap if yep. I could. Previous play is under further review. Agony written on the face it of Bobby It has to go Petrino. just sure. almost to the 38-yard line for a first down. Let's see how he goes. Now here again, the same rule applies as did to the touchdown. The call was a first down. Correct. But it is a reviewable play. Remember, his knee was down, but the, how far did the ball get? Can't tell on this one. It's going to be that almost the play we looked at when we looked at it live almost was the one that. It's kind of fun, isn't it? <laughs> well, we get back to that old saw about the indisputable visual well, evidence. Now, remember the, the new technology that the replay officials do have. I don't think the Arkansas fans are going to believe it, to tell you the truth. But yep. they got high definition TVs they now. They do indeed. So they are looking at it. From behind, isn't going to be able to show exactly where the ball is. It's where the ball is. And I'm not sure that one can, can give you any uh, further indication. review, the ruling on the field stands. I think they've got to, you know. Uh, the live call I thought was short. But uh, the call on the field was, the spot was good for the first down. Hmm. 6.04 to go, third quarter. You notice that wasn't a, a real vivid reaction from the crowd about that. First and 10 with 5.55 to go in the third. Deep man open, caught. Ronnie Wingo, touchdown Arkansas. Game of inches, isn't it? Inches one time against Arkansas, inches this time for Arkansas. Wingo, chased by Craig Stevens. How about this for a backup quarterback on the road in Auburn? He's now 10 of 11 for 154 yards and two touchdowns. Extra point from Hawker is up and good. 
Two-point game. Well, here's the matchup right here. Linebacker on running back. Let's see what happens. Coming out of the backfield. A little bit of a pick play. Did you see the wide receiver come down and try to get in the way? That caused just a moment of delay. Just a moment of delay for Stevens. And the ball was perfectly thrown. What a football game, huh? I'm gonna hang around. <laughs> the Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by TIAA Craft. Sonic. Coke Zero. And by Liberty Mutual. Ryan Mallett in the locker room with a concussion. His backup, Tyler Wilson, has come on and thrown for two touchdowns, 10 of 11. This is only the ninth game of his Arkansas career. He played in seven before this season. This is his second game, 2010. Aerial coverage of the SEC on CBS Sports provided by Goodyear. Well, we talked about the last two times that Auburn had the ball. Remember, they kicked the field goal at the end of the half. And then as well as Cam Newton started out that drive, they held him to a field goal. Meanwhile, the last two times Arkansas had the ball, number eight has led him to the touchdowns. Tejada's kick. It's a good one. From a yard in, this will be Ontario McCaleb. And right oh, through him. Oh, he needs right a block. Foot race. Which McCaleb almost wins. Well, he won. He came within a yard of a touchdown. Ontario McCaleb, 99 yards. Come on, Broadway got him down at the one-yard line, but I thought three Arkansas defenders, at least two, had a chance to get him. Remember now. We've had a blocked punt, and now a 99-yard return. you got to make that tackle. Once he gets there, the kicker's not going to stop him. Broadway's the last man to have a chance, but special teams has turned against Arkansas. Broadway's tackle brings McCaleb down at the one. Uh, I, I bet there's only one guy that's going to touch the ball you now. Think? <laughs> First and goal. Delay a game. Delay a game. Whoa. That's big. Whoa, Good is ball. it ever? Delay of game. Offense. Penalty five yards. Now remain first. And we asked Gus Malzahn, of, hey, with all this substitution and everything, have you had a delay a game? And he said, no, not one all year. That, that grabbed the whole staff there. The coaching staff, remember, anybody can call time out there. Nobody saw that one. Newton grabbed and brought down at the five-yard line. Remember, that play clock is very low, and it's tough for the coaches to see it. We've got it superimposed over the screen here, but obviously no one for Auburn saw it, coaches or players. Quarterback's job, quarterback's job. Second down goal. Newton up the middle. Down at the one. Back where they started, right? But third down, yes. Right. Tremaine Thomas grabbed Newton on this one. Third and goal from just outside the end zone. They're not kicking any field goals. They don't make this one, unless they lose some yardage. Thirty twenty-eight, four fifteen to go in the third. Newton almost bobbled the snap, but he leaps over the line of scrimmage into the end zone. Touchdown, Auburn. said he has the body of a tight end he runs like a wide receiver and he flies like Reggie Bush 
Byram's extra point is good. So Arkansas scores to cut it to two. Ontario McKinley, look at the smile. Cameron Newton will charm you. He's absolutely a delightful young man and a pretty decent quarterback. <laughs> Cam Newton has another touchdown. He's got 23 for the year, 37-28 now, 4-10 to go in the third quarter. And the Affleck trivia question, of course, Cam Newton, a transfer, started at Florida. Who's the only transfer player? Doc Blanchard, 1945. He began his collegiate career at North Carolina, went into World War II, came out, went to the Academy of West Point. He was Mr. Inside, and Glenn Davis is Mr. Outside, back-to-back. Heisman Trophy winners for the two of them both have now passed on. Yeah, how, about, how about that though? 65 years we haven't had one since and uh, these two guys are legit. Of course Ryan's out of this football game and uh, but Cam Newton when you have an undefeated football team and you're putting up those kind of yards you're in the middle of it. 410 to go third quarter and already 37 for Auburn 28 for Arkansas. That one will uh, be down in the end zone. Kobe Hamilton. Now let's go back to the studio. Tim with this John Hancock update. All right, Vern. Well, despite who wins the West, they're going to need a one-loss South Carolina on the other end, one would think, in Atlanta. Marcus Lattimore for South Carolina gets the first touchdown against the Big Blue in the Commonwealth. They lead Kentucky. Back to you, Vern. All right, Tim. Thank you. We may get a few more scores here. Tyler Wilson on in uh, place of the injured Ryan Mallett. Out with the concussion that occurred at the 9.42 clock spot in the second quarter. A little flea flicker going deep. Man coverage down there. The catch is made. Caught at the 27 by Greg Childs. You know, the uh, flea flicker, usually you try to fool somebody. Nico Thorpe was not fooled. He was man-to-man -man coverage all the way. You can get this throw anytime you want in the game. A deep, we almost hit the camera on that one. Yes, so yes. Deep. Came right by you. One-on-one -on -one against Nico Thorpe, and he was in coverage. He just did not make the play. Both of these secondaries are struggling with the ball in the air. 54 yards on that one. Here's Joe Adams tries to get a block. Nico Thorpe sheds the block and gets up to knock Joe Adams out of bounds. And Arkansas fans know the saga of Tyler Wilson. He was a two-year starter at Greenwood High School, led them to back-to-back -back state championships, had a prolific high school career, threw for more than 8,000 yards in high school, 93 touchdowns, and he's on in place of the injured Ryan Mallett, and he has been brilliant. 12 of 13. Dude, that one's caught wow. touchdown. Whoa, on a rope. Oh, my goodness. Joe Adams. There's not a backup in the country that can throw a ball like that. The ball is supposed to be completed, Vern, 18 to 22 yards downfield on that scene. You can't do it any better than that. That ball was never more than 10 feet off the, off the ground. And for the sixth straight game, Arkansas has thrown for more than 300 yards combined between him yes. and Mallett. Well, that took 50 seconds. Gee. Extra point from Hunter is up and good. Ball started on the 23. So you're going to want to throw that ball right around the five to three yard line. Look at the deep zone, two safeties. Fire it right over the middle linebacker, right on the three-yard line. Perfect throw and execution. We've got 87,451 who paid their way in here. Others assorted friends and family. <laughs> here are the two unhappiest guys in the building. On the left, Willie Robinson. His title, defensive coordinator, Arkansas. On your right, Ted Roof. His job. Defensive coordinator Auburn. Yeah. And right now, the numbers are already pinball 
And you know, Robinson goes, oh my God, it's my turn now. Do you? And I don't, I don't really know if there's an answer. I, I only think you have one way to combat these guys. I think you've got to eat up space for the quarterback. I think you've got to get to Newton before he gets started. I think you got to go at him. you got to tell your corners, like, listen, I don't know, try to stop them. But we got to go after their quarterback. We're just sitting back and watching him run is not going to work. Dehada will kick off again. Washington and McCaleb are deep again. And last time we saw this vision, McCaleb returned it 99 yards. This will be Washington from the six. Breaks a couple of tackles and gets out to the 27. And the only reason that Auburn has less yards is because of the 99-yard kickoff return. Now, just coming out of the locker room in street clothes, there's six foot six inch Ryan Mallett. Had such high hopes for today and then suffered the concussion in the second quarter. And with the new head injury rules now in the NFL or in college football, if you get Nick, you can fight all you want to get back in the game. They ain't putting you back in the game. First down 10, Auburn leading again by two. Here's Newton. Dan Newton on the carry. Andrew Stewart makes this tackle. Well, here's uh, how it stood when we came in. In the West, LSU undefeated, as is Auburn, 4 0, 3 0. Alabama knocked off by South Carolina last night. They get Ole Miss later tonight. The Razorbacks with that one loss to Alabama. But everybody is in play. Fannin. It's going to be third down. Yeah, Arkansas needs help because if Alabama doesn't lose again, they get the tiebreaker. But Auburn and LSU control their own destiny, and, and really, for that matter, so does Alabama, obviously, because they play both of these teams, LSU and Auburn. Third down, six. See if they come at them. Third down. Three wide to the left. One to the right, Mario Fannin is the running back alongside Cam Newton. Blitz, they, they, do. they do, they come. I think that's what you got to do to I don't know any other way to do it. They got him. First one there is Anthony Leon. Yeah, you don't have a great secondary, so you're trying to hide him. But number one coming from the left side of the screen, comes inside and just eats up the space. I think that's the way you have to get him. You have to eat up space before Newton gets started. It's the only way. And that ain't gonna work every play either. I mean, no, no, no. No, you, you but, but I think that has to be the predominance of your calls. Come after him. 90 seconds to go third quarter, and here is the second punt of the ball game. Stephen Clark and Joe Adams is deep. Not very. Can Petrino get any help from anybody but his quarterback in this football game? Clark, Adams, fair catch. And let's go down to Tracy Wolfson. Guys, Arkansas's defense was without their starting safety, Tremaine Thomas, for that drive. It looks as though he's dealing with a groin injury. They wrapped it up, but he's on the sidelines. No word if he'll return, guys. Okay, thanks, Trace. So now it's Ted Roof's chance. Yeah. Now what does he do? The quarterback just hit 13 straight. And they're not going to stop throwing. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> Tyler Wilson missed his first pass attempt. He's hit 13 in a row. Play action. No, it's not. I beg your pardon. They should. Hand off. Yeah, they should throw it. They should throw it. You know, and it, it's not just, if you watch the tape, it kind of jumps out at you, Vern. Mike Hartline, last week, Kentucky, went 23 for 28. Steven Garcia, remember, he was pulled out of the game, as you can see an injury to the offensive line right there. That's Ray Dominguez right there down. That's an important one, a tackle. But, but even Garcia had a big game throwing against these guys. Right. Oh, we get right from behind. The defender just was leaping to try to make the tackle and landed right on him. I don't know if it was Bates that landed on him, number I, 25, I couldn't tell. I couldn't either. Well, time has been taken for the injury. Dominguez will be assisted to his feet. Will return 
right after these messages. 59 seconds to go, third quarter, 37-35. Second down for Arkansas. Tyler Wilson, the sophomore, on in relief of the injured Ryan Mallett, and he has been terrific. Goes right. And that one is good to Childs, and he might move the chain again. Watch the subtle precision that a veteran receiver can set up a big play after the catch. He doesn't wait for the ball. Childs is out of here. Watch the ball comes to him, and he goes to the ball. Watch him go to the ball. Just that little movement created the space for him to get the extra yards. If he stands there and waits, he's got no momentum to run. Childs with four catches for 110 yards. Now under center. Hand off. This is Niall Davis. And he works his way still upright. Oh, baby! I bet he goes back to the huddle. I bet he doesn't. Yeah, there'll be no join. Nico Thorpe is having a very long afternoon. And that should be the final play. Let's see if they can get another snap. I, well, they get five seconds. They might. I think they'll just take a rest and make sure they get a good call to start the fourth quarter. Well, cinch up the seat belts. That's the end of three. 37-35. I'm the guy who gets to go do the game recap. We'll be back after this. Jordan Hare Stadium, Auburn, Alabama. We welcome you back to the start of the fourth. 37, 35, a moment ago, out on the field as the team switched ends. Ryan Mallett in street clothes, wishing the best to his teammates. He can do nothing but cheer. And we begin the fourth for Lundquist, Gary Danielson, Tracy Wolfson, 37 35, and the Razorbacks have the ball. Right side, Niall Davis to the 23-yard line. Tackle made by Darren Bates. You, you really got to wonder if you're either one of these teams, when you look at what you, you have to do on offense to cover up your defense, is it even possible to run the table for either one of these teams? Down. And that's a lot of pressure on your offense to have to score this many points every game. As much fun as this has been for us right. and for the viewing audience, Long boy, range. Long there have range. been some deficiencies on defense that have been revealed. Off his back foot, that one incomplete. It's going to be third down. Let's go to Tim Brando for this Heisman watch presented by Nissan. Vern, I believe you've got the Heisman front runner at your game, but Justin Blackman is underneath the radar for Okie State. 207 yards receiving the game's not over yet. He's averaged over 100 yards receiving in every game so far this year. Denard Robinson, by the way, uh, got hurt, did not return. Michigan's pulled it within a touchdown in his game. Taylor Martinez of Nebraska was pulled, and in that game, Bo Pelini's team has pulled it within a touchdown as well. So those two quarterbacks may be out of the race. On third down, there's the pass in the inside route. It is caught, and it's going to be Arkansas in for the touchdown. Greg Childs, fifth catch of the day. Burnt. This ball hit him right in stride. He accelerated through this slant. Childs is a wonderful receiver. Watch him accelerate way out here. Accelerate into the throw. This ball is laid way out in the hole. Watch him just run through it. Runs right through it and then just goes to the end. Boy, that is. I think either one of these seconds, I'm telling you, both coordinators are going to have to go after the quarterback. They got no choice. And the Razorbacks will go for two. The previous play is under review. Ryan Mallett looks on. How about the day for Tyler Wilson? Comes on 9.52, remaining in the second quarter. And he's now 15 of 17 for 270 yards. They are reviewing. In the last one before this throw, he throw away, he threw the ball away to avoid a sack, which was a smart play. So they uh, are trying to determine if he broke the plane. 
He landed on the defender. How about the knee? As his knee goes down, yeah. I think the ball is right there. Remember, it's called the touchdown again. Right. I don't think we've got anything to overturn it. Clearly, that ball has broken the plane maybe about three feet off the ground. I think this one's going to stand. Greg Childs. He was a nightmare last year for Auburn. He caught three big fade passes against him. He's having another nightmare game. Five for 133 so far in the game. Here's Penn After Wagers. further review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. Up by four, deciding to go for two here. The way he's throwing the ball, geez, who knows? <laughs> I think he's going like, we're not going to stop him. We need every point we can get. Roll out. Drills it. Caught. Yep. Two points are good. Childs again. He, well, how about his awareness? Childs right there. He knew he was going to go out of bounds, so he reached his right foot down first. Watch the awareness. On the run, he knows he's going to go out of bounds. Watch him tap his right foot first. Wonderful play. Tyler Wilson, who came on relief of this man, Ryan Mellon, Hogs lead. And now it's time for our Geico game recap. Well, Cam Newton had a huge first half, 13 rushes for 142 yards as these two teams went back and forth. Ryan Mellon had to lead the game on this play, a concussion in the second quarter. And again, it was back and forth. Neither team could stop the other. This was a controversial touchdown call. It was called a touchdown review. The call stood. Michaela then, with a 13-yard rush, made it 24-14. Auburn up by 10. Arkansas came back. Childs over Nico Thorpe to get within three. And then West Byram had a couple of field goals, second and third quarter, 30 to 21. Ronnie Wingo, 37-yard touchdown reception over Craig Stevens, the linebacker, 30-28. Ontario McCaleb with a 99-yard kickoff return. That set up a short touchdown run from Cam Newton. There you are, 37-28. Now, Tyler Wilson, brilliant in relief of the injured Ryan Mallett. That touchdown to Joe Adams. And just a moment ago, here's Greg Childs coming underneath, going in for the uh, touchdown. The try for two was good. And there is your Geico scoring recap. Gary, take over. You cut your career by about two or three years with that one, didn't you? I'm going to sit down for the remainder of the game. Arkansas has 40, 482 yards so far in this game, Vern, with their backup quarterback. And there's plenty of time left. So here we go. Remember how it ended the last time Cam Newton was on the field. There's Garrick McGee, the offensive coordinator. We had a shot at him with Tyler Wilson. Remember, they blitzed them. They ate up some space. Now, what will the adjustment be? Will they continue to blitz? As we look at the possession chart, it's those two field goals when they couldn't get anything out at the end of the half. Back-to-back -back times, Arkansas scored. Here's Newton. Right side, puts it on the line. Yeah, he wasn't anticipating the blitz there. That's one of those pitch and catch, expecting the blitz. That's a gain of 12. Catch made by Darvin Adams. Mario Fannin tripped. Looked like he was going to shake loose and get into the secondary, and he's caught and dropped by Anthony Leon, number one. When we talked about Auburn needing 80 plays in the football game, he need 29 more. However, <laughs> However, yes. when the other quarterback's 15 for 17, they may need more. Newton. Great coverage. 
And despite that, he kept the Oh, Cody Burns. Number 18, the former quarterback. Yes, it was. But, uh, Elton Ford, number nine, you can't do it much better than that. I mean, they go, wait a second, this guy can run like this. He's hard to tackle. I've got me in coverage, and he puts it right there on the spot. The irony of Cody Burns being the receiver and Cam Newton being the quarterback. Yes. As Cam Newton went to Florida, Cody Burns signed with Auburn. Quick screen. Emory Blake, number 80, to the 30-yard line, another first down. Yeah, let's quickly recap that story. Cam Newton lives close to Auburn, said, I always wanted to go to Auburn, but their number one quarterback was Cody Burns. When he was going to go to Auburn, I decided to go to Florida. Three years later, spot opened up. He's back on the football team. First down, Newton. Five yards back. Arkansas brings four. Fannin inside the 20 to the 17. Defense has become a forgotten craft for these two. Wow. See it? That was the zone read, and this time Cam Newton just kept it. I mean, if there's any team that's more ready for a close game, it's got to be Auburn. I mean, they've, they've, four of their games have gone right down to the wire. And they've won three of them by three points each. There's the give. This is Fannin again. Second down. Well, you know number two is going to have the ball on this one. He's either going to be running it or throwing it. Second and eight. See what Willie Robinson dials up. Does he come after him now? Second down eight. Sure looks it. He's done it before, hasn't he? Newton. Deep in the middle. Got a man open. Touchdown. Emory Blake, number 80, makes the grab. 15 yards. Why would you expect anything other than another touchdown? That's just poor technique in the secondary for Arkansas. Emory Blake's father, Jeff, a 14-year veteran quarterback in the NFL. Extra point, Byram up and good. Cam Newton has thrown for another. Gene Chiswick shows him his appreciation. Cameron Newton. What a show he's putting on for his head coach, Gene Chiswick. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by LG, Russell Athletic, Nissan, and by the Hartford. Beautiful shot of the moon, and it's taken from the blimp. Aerial coverage of the SEC on CBS Sports provided by Goodyear. Isn't that a pretty scene? And uh, just last night, they opened a brand new basketball arena here. Intimate uh, facility, seating just under 10,000. Beautiful from the outside. We were hoping to sneak a peek last night, but weren't quite able. The Globetrotters were here last night, right? Did you know that? Well, this defense for both sides. <laughs> nice segue. <laughs> okay. I don't want to say it reminds me of anything, but right? it does. I'll show you some poor technique by Elton Ford, number nine on this one, that you just can't make these type of mental mistakes when you're trying to play and blitz the quarterback. 44-43 in the defensively oriented Southeastern Yeah, Dallas. right. <laughs> I remember when it, <laughs> when did Auburn and Mississippi State play that 3-2 thriller? There we go. This is Kobe Hamilton. Let's go back and look at the touchdown. 
the latest but touchdown. First thing to notice, there is no help in the middle of the field. So if you're playing man-to-man -man on a receiver, you must force him to the outside. Watch Elton Ford, number nine. He lets him get inside, doesn't even put a hand on him, and just makes it an easy throw. That is just too easy of a play. Cooper Taylor on the sidelines. He gets a little enthusiastic. Now, is there any reason to believe that Auburn can stop Arkansas? We'll find out. What are they going to do? They're coming after them. They are. Wilson lets it go. Wonderful catch. Greg Childs again. That's good for a first down. Well, our guys up here have been frantically searching for some notes about Tyler Wilson. Okay, as he throws this wonderful one to Chris Childs, I mean, he's he's an NFL receiver playing in college. Look at him pluck this thing. But I'll give you some irony. Bo Mattingly, who does sports talk radio in Fayetteville, said Tyler Wilson had committed to go to George Gus Malzahn in Tulsa. And then Mal Malzahn got the job at Auburn. Petrino talked him into going to Arkansas. How about that? Here's first down. Wilson, again, that inside. So Gus Melzahn right now is going, yeah, I recognize exactly what this kid brings to the table because I had him coming with me to Tulsa. Malzahn is connected to a lot of guys in college football. There's Mitch Mustaine, who's a, the backup quarterback at USC. Gus told us yesterday he talked to him last week. Right. But how about that? He comes here. Tyler decommits. Petrino says, come join me. And all of a sudden, it's a shootout here in the SEC. Second down three. Niall Davis going left, caught short of the... It's going to be third and one. Off the bench, Tyler Wilson. And take a look at the four TDs he's thrown. There's one. Right to the outside. This one will just put up. We'll just His guy could get it, and no one else. Two. The second one was on a short yardage play. That throw to the middle of the field was an NFL throw, and this one, Childs, just shows you what a skilled receiver can do on a short pass. I don't know when we've seen a third down stop. It's third and one right here. Just a sack against Newton. That's all I've seen. Ten to go. Toss. Right side, first down, Arkansas. It's Brandon Green. The ball ball's out. out. The ball is loose. This is Zach Etheridge. There are no flags. That's ruled a touchdown. Was he down? Bobby Petrino is going, please be down. Now, Arkansas is going to catch a break here because even if Auburn wanted to come in, even if Auburn wanted to quick kick it here for an extra point, there's an injured player on the right. field, and Arkansas is going to get a review, and we'll get another close one, obviously. Yes. Blanc with the first hit. He's still got it. Stevens with the second. Ball's out. Right? Yeah, it sure is. It was starting to be fumbled. I don't think he was on the ground. No, no, no. He was on the body exactly. of Mike Blanc. Blanc. That first look was pretty dramatic for me. Let's see if so we here's can see Blanc. Look at 93. Was his knee down, Vern? That's I think, the only... uh... That first look, I thought I saw the ball move. Blanc, number 93. Craig Stevens. Any movement? Boy, was he, he, it's close. And it is close again. Here let's get, we are again, Gary. The call on the field was fumble. Yep. Let's see if Return his knee for a was down. Can we stop it? He's got the ball. Is he down? And then it comes out. Jeez. And another view. There's the knee. Is the Boy, knee down? I, I, oh. I think his knee was down. I'm going to go. that play, I yes. think they're going to overturn it. On that, on that replay. I think they're going to overturn it. I think Arkansas is going to get one here. I'm... The injured player is Aaron Savage, the sixth-year player. Missed the last two years with an injury. Uh, it, it, it seems to me the last view we had 
would indicate the knee was on the ground right there right boom. Now is the ball out. We don't know. You can't you got to tie the two together. <clears throat> so the call on the field was fumble touchdown. I think this one deserves a long look. If I'm the replay official I want every look possible. He's got the ball. One picture from behind his knees down. The other one you can't see when he, when the ball is loose though. Huge call. Let's see if we could get two looks in one in sync here. These two are in sync. Right, it's down. Left is together. I, oh boy. I, I think he still had possession of the ball. Again, the replay official is Jim Allison. He's earned his money today. Again. My goodness. Okay, here's Penn Wages. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. I feel like a debating class. You could argue on either side of it. Yeah, I, I do too. I guess the word indisputable. I mean, I'm always looking for proof, you know? I mean, that's where right. you got this stuff. And now Gene Shizik, I'm a defensive coach. Ted, I got some advice for you. <laughs> the advice is hold on to the football if you're Arkansas. West Byron with the extra point is up and it's good. And with 944 still to play in this one. It's 51 43. Well, uh, let's look at this bang bang play now, Gary. Yep. As uh, Green two, goes down. Yep, two hits at once. Craig Stevens, I think, is the guy that actually caused the fumble. And then in the secondary, Zach Etheridge picks it up, and that was an easy six. And so. The scoring binge continues, 51-43. Now the injured player on the last play is Aaron Savage. Quite a story. He's missed the last two years because of injuries. Was given a medical red shirt in his sixth season. He was recruited out of high school by Gene Chiswick when Gene was the defensive coordinator here. Fought his way back. And now dealing with an injury that... Uh, well, I don't know. Oh, dear. Yeah, he actually caught his foot in the ground trying to avoid a block from DJ, uh, DJ Williams on the play. And, and that is tough on the whole defense looking over there. That can be an emotional letdown. Well, I don't know. They're giving up points anyway. Yeah. You know I mean, here's Kobe Hamilton, number 11. Oh, got him. Eric Smith, number 32, the backup H-back. Tell you, Kobe Hamilton says, when does track season start? <laughs> this returning kickoffs, the SEC is dangerous. Well, the run for the rest of the game for Arkansas will just be a change of pace. Play fake, Wilson. A lot of time. Uh oh. Intercepted. This is Josh Bynes, the middle linebacker, dropping in coverage. And the senior leader, defensive captain, a 33 yard return. Burn, what's the rule when throwing over the middle against 2D? 18 to 22 yards deep. He waited too long. The linebacker was allowed to drop too deep. It was much too dangerous. He waits, he waits, he waits. He's trying to throw over the middle at about 30 yards. That's way too deep. They're going to eat that up every time. Josh Bynes, a middle linebacker. That is his second interception of the season. And remember, he had the big one against Connor Shaw for South Carolina in the game when they were trying to hold off South Carolina. Here's Newton. Cuts inside. Might have gotten the three. 
as Ramon Broadway number 26 makes the tackle. We're approaching a thousand yards in the SEC. Arkansas with 508 has turned it over the last two possessions. Auburn 413. Gee, many Christmas. Yeah, I, this is not what I'm used to watching. I must admit. <laughs> Right now, Boise State's saying, and we can't do this? <laughs> wow. Taking the clock down. Right up the middle. In for the touchdown. Cameron Newton. Nice job by Newton looking at the play clock and snapping it with two seconds. He said, I know we're going to score. I want to give my defense a rest. Look at him smile. Did you see the big smile? Well, we almost knocked Trooper Taylor yeah, over. Yeah, Trooper better. 12 rushing, 13 passing. Byron. He's chasing. John Vaughn to become the all-time scoring leader in Auburn history. He needed 21 coming in. He may have them. We got to add that up. But Cameron Newton, what a game! Yeah. How about this, Vern? If you're an Auburn fan, how ironic is this? Auburn's defense gives up 43 points, but it's been the defense that has set up the last two touchdowns. Now Tyler Wilson on, so brilliant in relief until that last pass. Ryan Mallett. Ah, what a day. Cameron Newton, ah, what a day. Well, about what had been a look of joy on Tyler Wilson's face, a little bit of anguish in his visage now because the interception led to another touchdown. Two turnovers in 20 seconds, 14 Auburn points. And that guy. He doesn't even look like he's breathing hard. Run for 100. Well, he's thrown for 140 and passed for 191. Is that what it, you just Yes, read? that's right. Well, it's still not over. You know, I mean, it's well, we got 15 points. Mm -hmm. Plenty of time. 8:31 to go. Still don't even have to do you know a drive. You don't even have to do onside kick yet. Not yet. Here's Kobe Hamilton at the two. Can't stop. Got him short of the 20. Now this is an energized Auburn special teams now. Emory Blake, number 80, with the tackle. Byram with 15 points in the day. Now six points away from becoming the all-time well, scoring leader. Think about it if you're Arkansas now. I mean, this is a good football game. You're playing with your backup quarterback. You've had a punt block. You've had a kickoff run to the one-yard line. You've had a fumbled overturn on the touchdown. You've had a fumble for a touchdown, and then an interception to the 10. You've had almost everything go wrong, and you're in the football game. Right side, caught. Joe Adams to the 22. And they'll go quickly now. Precision is the word I would use for Arkansas's receivers. I've been out of practice numerous times. Those receivers are drilled. Footwork, precision, speed, full speed, catch with your hands. They're as good as they are anywhere in college football, those guys. Adams has caught seven. Childs has caught seven. This one out of the backfield comes Ronnie Wingo, and that's going to be good for a first down at the 28-yard uh, line. I would, I would like to say as we read these notes, these notes are coming so fast, it's uh, hard to even imagine what's going on. <laughs> you know, I mean, you pick up the, if you turn in tonight and you see 58-42, really, how many overtimes? Oh, yeah, right, exactly. That's why I hate that overtime scoring thing. Uh -oh. oh, boy. Another one, another one for Josh Bynes. This was a miscommunication or a busted route. Joe Adams stopped, and Tyler Wilson, see, watch Joe Adams right there. He's going to stop on the play thinking a read is in front of Bynes, and Wilson trying to throw over the top of Bynes either way. Bynes was going to get that one. 
Yep. It's a lot of pressure on a young quarterback to make every decision. Josh Bynes, the senior linebacker. Second interception in as many possessions. Newton handoff. Right side, it's Michael Dyer, who is back for only the second play in the ballgame. The freshman out of Little Rock Christian Academy, 8,000 yards in high school, 94 touchdowns, and uh, spurned Arkansas to sign with Auburn. Huge calves on this guy. He is built solid. A running back, one of those small, like, he's like a, oh, the Ray kid from the Baltimore Ravens. That's what he reminds me of. 390 Ronnie yards. Rice, Ronnie Rice. Okay. Yes, somebody just helped me. Ray Rice, I'm sorry. Ray Rice. Yes, well, he's got that type of size on him. Big calves, squatty, McBurst. And a little speed. Here's Dyer. He's going to score. some toilet paper thrown at Toomer's corner tonight. One roll for every point and they've covered the whole intersection. Well, Vern, you talked about it. This offensive line with 141 combined starts. Mike Berry, the senior, number 66, comes around, fits the block, and Dyer fits it right in there. I was looking for the name who he reminds me of. Ray Rice, he's that size, but you can see how he's limping. Watch him come around, watch him come around. 66, left guard, everybody else on that veteran offensive line to the outside, a good block. Also by Eric Smith again and three quick touchdowns. And let's go back to Tim Brando in New York. All right, Vern, well, they haven't stopped scoring for the head ball coach either. There's no, no hangover for South Carolina. Marcus Lattimore with his second touchdown rushing of the game. They lead Kentucky by two touchdowns. Texas, Iowa, and Oklahoma State, all winners today. Back to you. Thank you, Tim. 6.36 to go. Three turnovers, last three possessions. And it has all gone south. Look at this. 40 years. They scored 63 at Florida in 1970. Anybody got a calculator? How many kickoffs have we seen today? Yeah, you're right. Uh, I bet Kobe Hamilton remembers. Yes, and Will long into the night. C count his welts. He has been popped. Nico Thorpe catches up with him, drags him out of bounds at the 23-yard line. The Auburn Tigers undefeated for the year. Fell behind in this game and then turnovers turned it around. Hand up. Niall Davis. Number seven, Niall Davis on the carry. Tackle is made by Mike McNeil, number 26. Number six, Mike McNeil. First in seven. That does it, a thousand yards combined. B.J. Williams, the tight end. Boy, he's double teamed and driven backwards. Josh Bynes, Craig Stevens, Jeffrey Whitaker, and the helmet came off. Second down six. 
second and six. You know, I, I, I'll bet you anything that right now Petrino is kicking himself for not trying to march down the field with some short throws to start, instead of trying to go to that middle read. Uh, mm -hmm. That's a, it's a very effective throw, obviously, when it's executed properly, but is it a dangerous throw, too? Can be, as we've seen. Yes. I mean, that's what Ryan Mallett got picked off in that game. Remember that's against, right. Uh, Alabama. The he lost tried to Alabama. throw it too deep. Niall Davis splits and goes wide to the left side. Three are wide right. Auburn defensively. Looks like going to rush four. They will. Wilson behind his intended receiver, but the catch is made. And that'll be good for a gain of about seven. It's Greg Childs. Boy, does he got nice hands. That ball was way behind him, and he just plucked it again. Well, Vern, we're kind of winding down here. It looks like Auburn's going to win this football game. How about a crazy year we got this year? Michigan State 7-0, and Auburn 7-0, and Missouri, Oklahoma State. My goodness. And the BCS standings are released tomorrow. First ones of the year. Here's Wilson. That catch is made by Childs. That's going to be his ninth grab of the ball game. Greg Stevens made the tackle for 17 to go. Yeah, this is probably what would have put the pressure on Auburn much more is just that fumble by the running when Brandon Roderick Green fumbled that play. That seemed to change the play calling for yeah, Arkansas. Yeah. They stopped kind of plunking it around, throwing the, the easy slants, and they went downfield, and it cost them. Niall Davis up the middle on first down. He gets to the 40-yard line. Tackle made by Craig Stevens. Yeah, that was a wonderful play by Craig Stevens. Might as well point out something good on defense, right? Craig Stevens saw that draw and just attacked it even before the blocker could get to him. 3.43 to go. Right side, Niall Davis hit from behind. Nick Fairley, number 90, makes the stop. Well, the Razorbacks behind the brilliant play at that time of the quarterback. Tyler Wilson came from behind, actually had the lead. But if you want to pick a key play in the ball game, I'd say the fumble and the return by Zach. I, I think so, too. Yeah. And, and, you know, this was almost a, I don't know, nightmare game for the replay official, don't you think? Oh, I mean, it, yes. There were about five could have gone either way type calls. And, and they all were huge. They all meant so much to the game. They just weren't for first downs. They were scoring plays. That'll be the talk after the game. You know that. Fourth down. Need is four. Clock shows 3.07 to go. Got it. Very nice. Catch is made for the first down at the 30-yard line. Lance Ray, number 82. Nice job that time. Good protection by that offensive line for Arkansas. But again, now Auburn is willing to trade yards for time right now. They just don't want to give up a big play. They'll give up six, eight yarders all the way down the field. Arkansas gonna, has all three left. It's going to get real interesting now for Auburn because now they're going to catch a defensive team next week. Yes. LSU comes in here. Here's Wilson. Has to sidearm it toward the end zone. Intended for Jarius Wright. Well, we'll be back here next week. LSU undefeated going into their game with McNeese State tonight. You can see they've uh, they won three by three. Came from behind to defeat South Carolina. We're going to give them the victory here next Saturday. LSU then at Ole Miss, Chattanooga, Georgia, and a game of some consequence against Alabama on the Friday after Thanksgiving. The Alabama fans going, we get rid of Tebow, now we got Newton. <laughs> I got to listen to Vernon Gary talk about Newton now. <laughs> well, that'll be on the talk shows tomorrow and in the chat rooms. <laughs>
Well, they're passionate. And for Arkansas, this will be the second conference defeat. Well, Arkansas is not going to go to Atlanta. Right. But they do play South Carolina and LSU, so they're going to have some say in this thing. Third and ten. Wilson across the middle, tipped and almost picked off. That was Jake Holland, number five. Middle linebacker back there to put a hand on it. And it's fourth down and ten. That was a, a, a very game football game by them. I mean, they really hung in here, I thought, Arkansas in this football mm -hmm. game. They? I mean, they competed. That kid right there really showed that it's not all going to end for Arkansas when Ryan Mallett leaves and goes to the next level. Wilson has thrown for 332 yards since coming on in relief of Ryan Mallett. And that should have added to the total, but it is dropped by Julian Horton, number two. So the ball goes over on downs. And for the day, 25 of 34, 332 yards, four touchdowns. Have the two interceptions, both picked off by Josh Bynes. Garrick McGee, the offensive coordinator, chatting with his quarterback. Job well done, I think. Got to give a lot of credit to the coaching staff for Arkansas, too. But you know what? Auburn found the plays. Caused the fumble, and then the two big interceptions, obviously the first one. But this new guy, how about this guy? And he is our Chick-fil-A player of the game. 10 for 14 for 140, throwing the ball. One touchdown, but then the gaudy number. That's the fourth game. He's gone over 191 in the stands. That's his mother with the visor, his mother Jackie. Where'd Dad go? He was there, been there most of the game. Father Cecil Cam gave his family. He said, really, ultimately, he turned down Mississippi State right. to come here. We're going to have a chance to talk Be more about because, that next week. Because of family exactly. was the tiebreaker, yeah. right? Yeah. Closer to the family. Well, Tim, Spencer, and Archie Manning are waiting for the Jeep postgame show on CBS. We've kept them waiting a while. Oh, wow. Sixty-five forty-three. Really curious now the way LSU plays defense. They're much more skilled at the corner. They can lock down receivers with their fine corners, Peterson and, and put more pressure with the blitz. I mean, they blitzed Florida. I watched the tape almost every play of that football game. It's third down. Final 50 seconds to go. Newton will take a knee. Cameron Newton. He is in the thick of anybody's conversation about the Heisman Trophy in 2010. He's, he's, he's in the middle of the national championship. Yeah. Fourth down. 14 seconds to go. Have you ever tried to drive through Toomer's Corner, the main intersection here, home yes. of Toomer, when, when they've won? No. Impossible. <laughs> well, it will be then. One of the traditions here. They throw toilet paper all over the place there. I'm so glad we don't have to recap every touchdown ever again in this one. 65-43, Gene Chizik's team wins it. The Auburn Tigers remain undefeated. For Tracy Wolfson, Gary Danielson, I'm Vern Lundquist. We'll come back to Tim Brando in our New York studios after these messages.